The following is a presentation of the day. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. A day seeped with tradition, fellowship, and of course, high school football. And what's better than a rivalry built on a battle for the sword? Fitch and Ledger. And it's all live on game day. Game day is brought to you by Waterford Dental Health. All that's good begins with a smile, and when you visit our office, your smile's our top priority. So visit waterforddentalhealth.com for more information. Find out how you can get all that dedicated, personalized care that you deserve. After the game, join us on our social media platforms at Game Day CT for the Foxwoods player of the game. The wonder of it all, Foxwoods Resort Casino. All kinds of great entertainment going on. You want to check out the Beach Boys this month? Go to foxwoods.com slash entertainment for all the information on ticket sales. And we are live at Fitch High School. Casey O'Neill along with the coach, Pasta Santabria. And this is a rivalry you are familiar with, the yes, battle sir. for the sword. Ledger in the blue and gold will kick off. Fitch in the red and black will receive. And happy Thanksgiving, sir. Happy Thanksgiving, brother. Dia de Pavo, man. Everybody's got their turkey in the oven. And all the trimmings are ready for this beautiful day. Wow, what a beautiful uh, setup here with this field, man. Un unbelievable. Wanamaker to kick off for the Falcons. It's a short kick. Taken up the middle by the Falcons. Out to the 42-yard line goes Trey McCoy. And that's where Fitch will have its first possession. The good news for the Falcons, everyone healthy. That means Malachi Maddox will be on the field today and healthy. He is a dynamic player for the Falcons. Ben Perry, McCoy, also in the mix. We'll name some others. The Ledger Colonels, of course, at 8-1, and one, uh, looking to sew up a home playoff game. Uh, we'll talk more during the game about the ramifications of a loss. The Falcons on first down have Perry from the pistol. Motion man goes. Handoff up the middle to Nas Matthews. Matthews gets to the 50-yard line. Gain of five on first down. This energy with the fans and everything since before it started was just unbelievable. We talked about history yesterday, and I heard guys from the 70s talking about plays when they didn't even have face masks. Unbelievable energy that's out here today with family and fans. Matthews is the lone set. Motion, option to the right, high pitch on the turf, and it looks like Perry was able to cover it. Lentz had a chance oh boy, to catch that, that in the air and go for six, but yeah. Perry recovers it. That's one thing about this option team. These two option teams have a great opportunity to do explosive plays, but plays like that can happen, you know, where you have a missed pitch. We talked about yesterday's game where we had issues with the football, securing the football and snaps. You know, these are the things we have to watch out for this game. I'm going to add another thing that makes a great rivalry after this play here on third and long for the Falcons. Motion, Perry, toss, pitch to Adonis Fine. Fine, shifty, gets to the outside. Speed and banged out of bounds hard, but not until he has a first down. Big play, Adonis Fine, and the Falcons are in business in Ledger territory. Definitely, this Falcon has a lot of energy starting off into the offense. Explosive blocking right now and some fast running. We talked about what makes a great rivalry. Well, how about this one, too? These two teams essentially run the same system, which yes. means both teams practice against this system all week all long. Time. So everyone knows what everyone else is doing, uh, which means it's there's no unfamiliarity. In fact, the opposite. It is exactly. everyone knows. So this is a true chess match of teams completely familiar with what the other team is doing. It's the battle of best of what you do. First down from the 45. Perry rolls, throws out in the flat, has a man complete. Torres with the catch, and he'll cross the 45-yard line to the 30-yard line. Another first down for the Falcons. I tell you, the Falcons' engine is running full speed right now. Coach is excited with all the play calling that's going in and the execution. I know that Ledger has to kind of find a way to really settle down and just, you know, stay focused. Again, they've seen this offense before. They just have to have more rhythm in, in following their techniques and finishing off these tackles because it's going to be a difficult if they can't tackle today. Well, one thing Fitch does is they play fast. Yes. It doesn't mean that they rush up to the line or ever, but as soon as the ball is hiked, it's fast. Everyone's moving fast. The linemen are pulling hard. Everyone's going hard. 
Handoff on the dive to Matthews. And he'll gain the yard. I believe he's going to get to the mark. Will they give him the first? They will. Move the chains. First down, Falcons. Ball will be put right on the 35-yard line of Legend. Both teams are wearing their home jerseys, brother. What do you think about that? I'm, I'm a fan because I think both of their home jerseys are, are beautiful. I, I love the classic Ledger blue and gold yep. they have on right now. Of course, Fitch in the black and red. Now, little thing you might not know is the Wesleyan Cardinals oh, really? were black and red and oh, wore these sucks. almost these exact uniforms. So for me, I love the black and red uniforms. Dive to Matthews, off left tackle, gain of three, second and long. We saw Ledger have the ball... Uh, you know, teams have been able to move the ball on Ledger on the ground, but they haven't been able to score. The scoring defense for Ledger has been very good this year yes. uh, on, for teams that run the ball. If you look at Ledger, uh, you know, they gave up a lot of points in the first couple of weeks, and then, of course, Waterford scored late against them. Mm -hmm. But uh, other than Wyndham, they have not given up a lot of points this year uh, against anyone. That's a very tough defense. Option, Perry keeps it, breaks a tackle. Slippery, Ben Perry, first down, now he shows the strength. Legs churning and a late flag comes in as Perry got down close to the 15-yard line. What a nice run. That was a nice run. Hey, brother, I want to add this. To tra tradition has always been great, but you know what? Another thing that I love about this game is generations. You know, we got guys' names here that I remember in the past that I had a chance to play and had a chance to watch when I was coaching. So these names out here that you're throwing out are names that have been part of family history in, in the game of football and these traditions of Thanksgiving. Sure, Trey McCoy is the son of, of a McCoy. You know, have got Drab, the son of Drab. You've yep. got uh, Carter and BB. Yeah. You know, there are, this is our name, absolutely, name is a part of the rivalry. So as they assess, it's going to stay with the Falcons. They're going to walk it back. It's a spot foul. So it will be a first down. The flag, the uh, chains will move. So even after the penalty was assessed, it will remain first down. The ball is going to be marked at the 24 of Ledger. Casey, if you're going to talk about Fitch and Wesleyan, you got to mention Nick Helbig, Fitch alum, senior at Wesleyan, recently named the top defensive player in New England. Wow. And we'll talk. I will talk about him, Peter, because I have followed his career and that football team, and I'm very excited for what's in the future for him as well. Perry to throw, corner route, has him in, and it's gonna be broken up, but we're gonna get a flag. Pass interference is gonna be called. Stateville Radix was open. The big wide receiver had a body, and the Colonels are gonna get a pass interference call against them. Uh, Curse will get called with the penalty. Uh, going back to Helbig, of course, who was a game day favorite for the, his years at Fitch, so dominant at Wesleyan, despite losing the COVID year, setting all kinds of records. He is, was not only the, the New England player of the year on defense, but because he has a year of eligibility left because of the COVID year and is graduating, he is actually going to be putting himself into the transfer portal, hoping to get one year wow. of, high, of higher level football. That would be great. He's hoping to get a Division I you know, offer to, to go somewhere and play one season at a higher level. Uh, that's how much the kid loves football, and he's been a great asset to Wesleyan, who uh, were the little three champions this year. Yeah. So, very I, happy about I that. wish I had one more year myself, but my body's saying, no way, Jose. <laughs> I hear it. <laughs> Helbig was, a, was part of some great games here on game day. We loved having him and um, doing, you know, doing the us Wesleyan alum proud with his efforts there for the Cardinals. First down, Falcons after the penalty. Dive to Matthews up the middle, big hole. And Nas Matthews is going to get seven on first down, and Fitch is cooking. Yeah, right now the defense has to, to work on this, uh, you know, formation, this motion that comes across as a jet sweep with the dive play. Those outside edge players have to make a commitment to defend the jet sweep, which is opening up the gap for that off tackle area. And now right now, you know, Ledger's putting some personnel in there to really penetrate and work on stopping that gap uh, and clogging it up. It's going to be second and four. Perry. Motion man, sweep to the outside on the jet well sweep played. goes to fine, and that was was yeah. well defended by Ledger. Yeah, again, that was a good read by the outside backer. He realized the jet sweep was committed, and then the team pursuit was awesome. I mean, this is what they have to do. 
you know, force Fitch right now in a third and long and try to make a pass there. So this is down and distance, four down territory for Fitch. So you got third and five, but you got two downs to get five yards. So mm -hmm. uh, normally I'd say, you know, third and long is an uncomfortable distance for Fitch, but I don't think this changes anything for them. They're going to run, you know, two running plays here to get five yards. Yeah. Show a little different formation, twin receivers to the right. Perry's going to sprint. Keeper gets a block. First down, heading towards the end zone. Touchdown, Falcons. What an effort. Great blocking on the perimeter. Sealing it up, and his effort pushing it in was unbelievable. Great start for this game. Ben Perry, he's been a game day player of the game before, and he shows his toughness there. Quarterback run, touchdown, Falcons. Six nothing here in the first period. There's the muddle huddle. Is it an extra point? Is it a two-point conversion? Are they running drills on the sideline? No one really knows. That muddle huddle is a special thing. I used to use it at Delaware State, and I realized I was the first center eligible and caught two points one time oh, over there. Oh, so oh. Yeah, yeah. I'm, There's got to be a film of that someplace. Yeah. Kick okay. is up. Sails wide right. So the one... No good on the play. Negative on a nice opening drive for the Falcons as they come away with only the six points, but they do score on the opening drive, and we'll see if Ledger can match that. So I, I had a chance to talk with Coach Ellis before the game, and I said to him, listen, you Coach, you've been a part of so many great rivalries. Right. What makes a great rivalry? And he said, you know, he said, my Stonington, Westerly, and East Lime Waterford rivalries were community rivalries. Two yes. communities that interact with each other all year long across all sports. Mm -hmm. So on Thanksgiving, they be, their rivalry was because these are people who are with each other all year long and you know working together and it, it becomes a, it's a friendly but fierce yes. community rivalry. Yeah. He said, Fitch and Ledger aren't just based in history. They're based in American history, Revolutionary, Revolutionary War history. Yeah. He said they're playing for a actual sword that yep. was part of American history in the battlefield. Yep. And then he made a point that I hadn't thought of, and he said, and these two communities are military communities. He yes. said, Ledger and, and yes. Broughton are full, both full of military families. And for military families, the tradition of that, that wartime history, the yep. American Revolution is often uh, something, and there's a little bit of rivalry within the military as yes, well. So he said, and I said, you know, that's a really Very insightful good answer, coach. And that's why he's Papa. Definitely, he knows his stuff. <laughs> Falcons with a six nothing lead will kick off, and Ledger will have its first opportunity here momentarily. Cavuso with the kick, line drive, squibs through, through the hands. Of Streckfus, ball loose, and I believe Ledger fell on it. They're battling for it right now. We gotta see. Oh, yep. Ledger got the ball. Anthony Adamick came up with it for Ledger, but that's after Streckfus put it on the turf. So, a fortunate break for Ledger, but you couldn't have, I, mean, I don't think Fitch could have asked for a better result. That kick was low, mishandled, fumbled. I mean, it was everything Fitch could have hoped for, and Ledger's gonna have to go a long way. They're gonna set up. Their first down on the 12-yard line. Of course, we talk about legend. You got to start with the playmaker, James Green, number seven. We'll get the focal here, both the attention of the Fitch defense as well as the legend offense. Jacob Lenz and of the the general, Jackson Polton, that quarterback. And a flag on first down. We're going to get a legal procedure, I believe, against. Ledger, so yeah, too many guys in the backfield. Not the way that Coach Sericchio wanted to start today. His defense gives up a sustained drive touchdown, and his offense, starting in the shadow of its own goal line, also gets off of the first play with a penalty. So, first and 15, Green is the main back for Ledger. Polton under center in motion. Lentz. Handoff off tackle to Green, and he'll. Go off the right side for about four yards, almost back to the original line of scrimmage, maybe even shorter than that to the 10-yard line, second down. Yeah, this defensive line looks like they're energetic right now. They just got off their blocks real quick, and everybody knows they got to attack seven and keep him from having that second-level attack because once he gets to that second level, he could do magic. Second and 12. 
Handoff again to Green, off right tackle, same spot, same result, not much there. And it's going to bring up third and long, and this is an uncomfortable position for the Colonels. Yes. We know that Poulton, though he you know, has had success throwing it on downs when you're not expecting it, right. Ledger, not a team equipped to consistently do third and long. No, their goal is to make sure that they can have a good running game that makes those safeties come down to commit and help in the run. And in a situation like this, I know Coach from Fitch is going to be excited saying you can play some coverage right over top and then bring some pressure on the inside. Streckfist goes wide right, Lentz wide left. Green in the slot. Polton gonna throw, pressure, steps up, avoids the pressure. Now he's got some room, heads to the outside. First down, Jackson Polton as he crosses the 40 yard line. How did he escape that? The slippery <laughs> one. Jackson Poulton gets a first down for the Colonels. He pulled an Eli Manning right there. There was two guys that had his jersey on the backside, but his strength, his legs are amazing. He pushed right off of it, and then he became a track star, worked to the outside corner, and gained some tons of yards in getting a first down for the Colonels. I mean, that is a big difference maker for the senior Poulton, who is, you know, we'll talk more about him as a quarterback and what he means to this Ledger team, because they're facing a sack at the goal line. Yeah. And instead, they're at the 40 uh, and with a first down uh, entirely on his wherewithal and vision. Talk about an emotional blow for the defense, but they got to get set and play again. Power set. Fullback dive. Ball's loose. Flag comes in. So there's a bunch of stuff going on right now. We'll let the officials sort it out. So the officials talking it over right now. It looks like the ball was recovered by the Falcons. The question's going to be, was he down, was the whistle blown, and what the penalty yeah. is. Falcons say they want it, it was theirs. Ledger. Coach Ellis is right by the numbers waiting to hear what's going on there. That is not a good reaction for the Falcons yeah. right there. I don't. They didn't like the news they got right there. Officials coming over, Coach Ellis is, he is not, he is not pleased either. <laughs> He's got some fire in him today. Coach Ellis is one of those good coaches that's very passionate with his players and definitely wants the best for them. So the penalty was actually a illegal chop block yeah. against Ledger. What happened was one of the linemen was going downfield, and before the end of the play, the defensive back that came up, he attacked the knees, and that's illegal. We don't want that. That's part of the safety factors that we talked about in the game that keep these players healthy and competing. We can't cut low, especially if it's downfield. Only in the line of scrimmage we are allowed to do it, where if it's one contact, an immediate cut, it's allowed in the game, but not downfield. This is not college football. Well, that's going to be, we're going to have our own Mike tomorrow find out the answer. Did the officials say that the ball was not recovered by Fitch? Because if it was, then that should have been a declinable penalty. Hand off to Green. And Ledger continues to try to plug that right side, and they have not been able to get much from the right side. It's going to bring up second down and over 20, 24 yards. If, if Ledger lost that fumble mm -hmm. and the penalty, it's, not a it's, it's a dead ball, it's, you know, after the play, so it should have been a declinable penalty if Fitch recovered it. So I'll be curious what the officials said, whether or not the uh, the play was dead yep. or whether it wasn't a recovery. So third and long for Ledger. Holton option right, pitches to Lentz. Lentz caught in the backfield and wrestled to the ground for a loss. Great pursuit from the Falcons. A great defensive series for the Falcons right here. Forcing him now to punt. We have some scores. Peter, what do you got? Westerly out to a quick 14-0 lead over Stonington. Uh, Ram 13-0 over Bacon. And East Lime up 7-0 over Waterford. Wow. So Ledger will punt. Good series for the Falcons. Snap is right. Punt gets off. Lenz gets it. It bounces and takes a good roll for Ledger to the 40-yard line. So the Falcons will have their second possession of the game at the 38-yard line, their own 38-yard line. Let's see if the Ledger defense can adjust and what the Falcons will draw up here after their defense gets the ball back for them. 
Casey, I got to say, man, this is bringing back a lot of memories of Thanksgiving games that I was a part of as an athlete, as well as a coach. You know, there were games here that we battled till the very end. Some games that I remember gave me more heartburn before I even had a chance to have a turkey leg in my stomach. Uh, but, uh, you know, the atmosphere today is beautiful. The weather is great. We were talking about that last night. Was it going to be windy? It's going to be cold. It's perfect weather for football. Um, you know, just some good energy and some good memories as we're playing along in this game. First down, Falcons. Perry runs option left. Pitches late. Fine has it. Stutter steps and gains seven. Give Ben Perry credit for the, you know, he waited till he was on his way to the ground yeah. to get that pitch off. Great patience. He made sure that the defensive end made that commitment to slide in. And once he did, he made a pitch so that that outside corner really had to fight to get to that perimeter. But they gained a lot of yards on it. It's a good second and short right now. Now, it turns out to be moot, but the uh, reason why the Falcons did not recover that fumble was they had blown the whistle. So they said the forward progress of the back had been stopped. Yep. So good point. The officials were all over it. Thank you for the clarification, Mike Demora. The man. Second and short, Perry. Dive to Matthews. He'll be right at the sticks, so we'll see where they mark it. But either way, it's going to be a good gain for the Falcons. Nas Matthews that time gets them to third, and we'll call it a foot. Yeah, the quarterback right now is taking a beating every time he's getting that pitch. It's going to be something that we got to find out in the fourth quarter if he has that stamina because this defense right now knows that they try to get to that mesh point, they get to the quarterback first. Anything could happen right there, a pitch that can cause a fumble, a misdirection, or, you know, bad you know connection with a mesh point. So, got to see his character, how it lasts throughout this game. Third and a foot. Will the Falcons go for the first down or see about a big play here on third and short? Hand off to Nazir Matthews and first down Falcons as they head into Ledger territory. Falcons seem very confident in their ground game right now. Led, of course, by junior Ben Perry, who has been a fabulous commander here at the quarterback position. You know, the double wing system and the option system are very similar. Once you find out where you can attack, you're going to go after it at all times. I mean, this is something that they found out right early from the game. They're going to utilize it in their call play and try to set up where these safeties come down to get a play action pass to get a touchdown. Motion. Handoff on the jet sweep. Cabusa will have... A good seven or eight yards on first down as Fitch has shown a little bit of everything. They've shown the dive to the yep. fullback. They've shown option left and right. Yep. They've shown the jet sweep, and they've shown passes both in the flat yep. and sprint draw from the quarterback. So, I mean, the Falcons yep. think about the playbook. Think about the mixture being, you know, a turkey leg here, a wing over there. You got some stuffing that I know Peter loves so much. You could put it right there with the cranberry sauce being a play-action pass. They're working that Thanksgiving offense pretty good. Second and five. Perry, option, keeps it himself. Spun at the first down marker. I think he has enough for the first. We'll see if they mark him and move the chains. I think they will. The official on the far side, however, says no. Short, third and a yard. Short, yep. That's that, you know, one last little scoop off the plate, yep, right? One definitely. Last Third and a foot, ball at the 37-yard line. It's a dip of gravy sauce that we got to make sure they, they move on. <laughs> Perry. Dive, Matthews, first down and more. Crosses the 30-yard line. Ball's fumbled, picked up by Ledger. Down the sideline goes the Colonels. Fumble, recovery, and return. A big play for the Ledger defense. Great effort. They stripped the ball because the ball security wasn't there. As, as he was running, he was trying to stiff arm, and the ball on the outside was not secured. It has to be high and tight. They popped the ball out, scoop, and they were working on that uh, turnover right there. Good opportunity for Ledger right now. Big play by the Ledger defense, getting it back and into Fitch territory. The Falcons were driving the football, looking for their second score of the game. Instead, the opportunistic Colonel defense with the play, and now they'll get it back in much better field position here in Falcons territory as we're near the end of the first period. 
Poulton keeps it himself, rolls right, breaks a tackle, can't leg tackle him like that, and he's down on the sideline. They say the ball is loose again. Let's see what the officials say. Falcons say they have it, are the official, and they do. And they do, back to back fumbles. We talked about that yesterday, that fumble with the peanut, man, it was very slippery. I think these kids got a little bit of that uh, pre-turkey taste because their fingers are right now slipping this football out. We have seen unbelievable five balls on yeah. the turf already in the first quarter. Yeah. So obviously the conditions on the field and the slippery football, these kids are going to have to figure out a way to hold on to it. So after the opportunistic ledger defense gets a takeaway, the Falcons come right back and they take it back. And they'll have it first and ten at their own 42-yard line. Okay, so this is what I'm talking about, brother. It doesn't matter what the record is. This is a tradition and a battle for the sword. And the Falcons look like they're an eight one team right now. Perry. Dive, wow. and Matthews is buried in the backfield. First one off the pile is rush check for Ledger, and that's a loss of three on first down. Rush check and his linemen were the first to plug some gaps there. That's the first time we've seen any sort of penetration yeah. from the front for Ledger, and they stuffed Matthews before he really had a chance. And that's going to run the clock down, and it looks like the Falcons will be content to let this thing run to the end of the first period. So as we are at the end of one, 6 nothing Falcons. Come on back, second quarter action. You're watching Game Day live on the day.com. can feel it and we know you feel it too fall is here crisp air falling leaves pumpkin everything and football so much football with a new season upon us it's a great opportunity to take a quick time out and make sure your insurance program is in order the burns agency is here to help you play by play strong coverage dependable service and touchdown savings give us a call or visit us online the burns agency proudly serving eastern connecticut since 19 32. 6-0 Falcons with the football as we start the second period. Some scores around the ECC. NFA off to a quick 6-0 lead over New London. Waterford 8-7 over East Lyme. And Westerly up to a 21-0 lead over Stonington. In a game that is of interest to Ledger, uh, Ellington right now trailing Rockville 6-0. Of course, uh, Ledger expects a home game with a win, but with a loss, they can guarantee themselves a spot with an Ellington loss to Rockville. So, Ledger to our fans of Rockville right now, but they're also interested in winning this game and retaining the sword. It's second down and 12. Perry keeps it himself. Heads to the outside, gets a great block. Cabuso sprung him. Perry down the sideline, and Green shoves him out of bounds as he crosses the 30-yard line. Give Cabuso credit on the edge. He made a great block to spring Perry to the outside. Man, Perry's footwork is unbelievable. As he got up there, he full, came out the fullback, he found a gap, and then there was this player going right after his feet, tippy-toed over top, and started to run downfield. That was a great run by him. Falcons picking up right where they left off. First down and 10 ball at the 35-yard line of the Colonels. Falcons already on top 6-0 here in the early going. And it's been Ben Perry making all the right decisions so far for the Falcons. Perry keeps it himself again. Less there that time. Better job by Ledger. Giovanni Sizer was the first to get Perry, and that's a short gain of one. Yeah, the interior defense, they have a lot of good big guys there that could stuff the inside run. You know, it's where we're working on the veer, the off-tackle area. That's between the tackle and the tight end. Those are the gaps that those two players have to make sure they keep it squeezed and tight. Otherwise, that back could penetrate through. And then the outside edge, that's another thing that Ledger has to work on. Second down and eight. The Falcons moving the football. Perry. Toss right to Cabuso. Cabuso gets about four. Flag comes in. We'll see what the flag is. As it stands, Cabuso got about three. It'd be, it would be third and five, but the flag 
will get sorted out. You know, while the flag gets sorted out, brother, I have another Thanksgiving story to tell you. It was a day that mom had uh, made our turkey and was uh, bringing it with those. You remember the old crock pot, those big ones? Sure. ones? And while she was bringing it to the side, and you know, in New London, most of those things are hilly areas. There was an apartment complex that we lived in. Oh, no. Yeah, let me tell you, it was really tough because she was on her way down. We were on our way to Ron's house, and she slipped and fell. But while she was tumbling and bumbling down that hill, my mom made sure she held that pot tight. My brother was there, Benny. You know, he comes up to her when she fell down. She said, I think I twisted my ankle. He goes, Mom, is the turkey okay? That's a First true of all, story. priorities, I get it, Benny. <laughs> Second of all, you know, give mom credit. She's not yeah. fumbling. Oh, no. She's not fumbling she the held turkey. The, she held the turkey strong. And she just wore a boot and moved on. Second and long. Dive play. Still on his feet, crossing the 35-yard line. What a nice run. Not giving up anything. Man, these Falcons are playing with passion, brother. The offensive line is coming off the ball really aggressive. St. Phil Ravix with the carry, got him back to the original line of scrimmage. It'll be third and 10 for the Falcons. You know, one, one thing I like about this game is that you have senior leadership. These guys don't want to lose for their seniors. You know, the younger guys that are there are really being physical. Third and 10. Perry takes the toss, rolls right. Gonna throw, man, wide open is Cabuso. First down. 15 yard line and more. Cabuso still churning down closer to the 10. And right now, everything working here for the Falcons offense. Yeah, these coaches can see it from up top. They know that these backers are coming up to try to stop the play. And that lets that back slide right out there in the flat route and it keeps it wide open. This is the stuff that we're talking about. These defense has to be disciplined and reading their keys and staying on their man. Otherwise, it'll be a difficult day for the Colonels. And it all starts with the front four not being able to stop the fullback dive. If, right. if that front four needs help stopping that dive, you gotta get those guys involved. Everything yeah. else opens up. Definitely, Case. First and ten, Falcons. Ball to twelve. Jet sweep. Heading to the outside, Adonis Fine, and he'll be run out of bounds at the ten yard line. So good pursuit by Lentz and the Colonels. It'll bring up second and long. We'll call it seven for Fitch. This is the area, though, where this offense can, it, where you really need that fullback dive that was matchups on the front line to matter because the field now shrinks, right? So you don't, you're not worried about getting beat over the top. You yep. can pinch everybody up anyway because you got the end zone yep. as your other defender. As your other defender, yeah. And this defense, you know, it's really tough with, with option teams to put a goal line defense in, you know, because then you take that responsibility out away from those backers when you have a defensive lineman in there. Hand off. And down to the six yard line goes Saintville Ravix. It'll bring up third and four. It's going to be a long four. And this is obviously four down territory for the Falcons. Uh, but this is where those runs, right? So mm -hmm. now you, you don't have any fear of what's behind you. Nope. Everybody's up on the line, right. so stretches it this way and you can plug gaps. So here's where I always love the creativity here is this is where the quarterback can make all the difference. We've seen yes. Perry. Perry makes one good decision. He's the hardest one to bring down. He's the hardest one to bring down, yep. Yadiel Torres wide right for the Falcons. Perry gives it to St. Phil Ravix and Ledger does a nice job on the interior. It's gonna bring up fourth and short. They can get a first down without getting a touchdown. So it's gonna be fourth and two ball right around the five yard line. You know, another note about the option game is that your quarterback is a runner, you know, and most defenses, we don't even put that in the picture. You know, spread teams have been added into the game, but back in the day, a quarterback was not even thought of, you know, to be part of that system. With the option system, you have three running backs, you know, that be able to hold the ball and, and take off. So it's really something that uh, defensively is hard to challenge, you know, it's, it's gotta be a disciplined kind of style. And uh, in order for Ledger to really overcome this is to be disciplined in what they've been taught to do this week. Timeout on the field, 6-0 Falcons, a big fourth down play coming up. It's going to be fourth and three with the ball about the six-yard line. A first down can be achieved here by the Falcons without scoring a touchdown. We'll see, see what happens here on Case, fourth down. We are talking about Papa Ellis, talking about family and community, you know, and these two teams have great military families. I, I go back to the day where we lost a young brother, Matt Buriak, and how beautiful it was, the setting, 
to have the Fitch Falcon community come and support us when we lost a player. And that was all about love, you know? And then the game was one of the best games I've ever been a part of. The rivalry and the energy was big and strong. But in the end, the passion about understanding how a community can get, a community can get involved and, and comfort a family was very special. Until this day, we always say MB23 on Thanksgiving Day for the Colonels. Falcons with the ball here, fourth and three. Ball at the four yard line. Perry, gonna throw, and he's sacked from behind. He's buried by Jackson Poulton. So quarterback on quarterback, sacking Perry, and a big stop for the Colonels defense. Great call Great on the weak side pressure. Again, he was clean because the numbers were there. He came off the edge and he worked on attacking the hip, and poor man, he was on the opposite side trying to find a receiver. He didn't even see it coming. Great play for the Colonels. Great opportunity for them right now to hold the ball. You know, biggest factor too, we talked about how these two teams are option running teams. This clock is flying by. You know, we got to see how they can have that ball control and score. First down, Colonels at the 11 yard line. Poulton after the sack will sit under center for Ledger. Hand off to Green on the dive, and again, the Falcon interior has done a fabulous job. It'll bring up second and long. Of course, the Falcons have won five straight games here. The sword has not been in Ledger since 2015. The Falcons want to keep it. The Colonels want to get it back. And as important as the postseason is for Ledger, mm -hmm. they are focused on the sword first and the postseason second. There's nothing better than to have that sword home. You know, it's a beautiful plaque that has a great sword that has a lot of tradition. Second down. Ball's on the turf. Ball's on the turf. A mishandled snap between Poulton and the center. It appears the Colonels have fallen on it, which would be a huge break for the Colonels, and they have. Boy, this football does not want to be held. It's like a turkey drumstick that's taken off before we even cut the leg out. <laughs> They are fighting for the ball today. Third and eight. Ledger uncharacteristically inefficient here offensively. They have been a little out of sorts and a little out of sync. Yeah. Part of that is guys like Gianni Drab, which is Fitch's main interior lineman causing havoc here. Third and long. Toss left, green. Green dragged in the backfield. Flag on the play. Green doesn't get back to the original line of scrimmage. Great pursuit from the Falcons. We'll see what the flag is all about. While they're checking on that flag, one of the things that I do like to see is how people read their keys. In that example there, the guard pulling, the defensive lineman realize, we call it trail, trail off the hip, where as soon as he pulls, he's just staying right on the hip, can keep, you know, containing that gap and keeping it closed. And Green didn't have a chance to cut back at all. That was a great pursuit and a great game plan today that the Falcons have to stop big number seven. The human joystick right now looks like he doesn't have any batteries in the joystick. We got to get it going. Penalty. Another chop block against Ledger. This time it'll be declined. That's going to bring up fourth down, and that's going to bring Ledger with the punting unit. And that punter is going to be Lentz, and he'll be standing on his own two-yard line. That was the other aspect of the chop block that we talked about rule-wise. A person that's a defensive lineman that's engaged by two people, none of them can actually chop block when there's contact like that. That's why the penalty was called. Good snap. Lentz, line drive kick. Taken at the 45-yard line by St. Phil Ravix. He breaks a tackle, breaks another tackle, still on his feet. Down inside the 20, so beautiful return by Kevin St. Phil Ravix, and it's going to be great field position for the Falcons. Ledger has really not been able to do anything to help themselves out offensively. The defense will be put on the spot yet again. And this field position for the Falcons again favors them. Even though the score is still 6-0, to I think that this is a good field position for the Falcons to get some points. Get you some updated scores momentarily, but here in the second period, 6 nothing Fitch, and they have it first and 10 on the Ledger 14-yard line. So, Case, how did your house uh, smell on the way out of here, man? You know, you had the turkey put in and you... Well, we're going to the... We're, my wife uh, tore her ACL, so she's got surgery coming up. So even though we normally host Thanksgiving, yep. uh, we are going to be at the in-laws. However, the house smelled like pie. Woo! Perry keeps it himself, breaks a tackle, gets into the second level, and he'll be close to a first down. Beautiful run by Ben Perry, but better decision. Oh, yeah, I came home last night. We had the 
the pumpkin pie, the pecan pie, yep. the apple pie. The house smelled fabulous. The wife burned the midnight oil, getting it all together. <laughs> and uh, this morning she was heading off to Ram to watch it. Uh, our son in the, his Thanksgiving Day game, Bacon and Ram. Well, the Bacon game is 12 to 6. 20 to 6. I, I like 12 better, Peter Wampi, <laughs> but 20 to 6. Ram on top of Bacon. We'll get you some other scores here momentarily. Second and three for the Falcons. Ball at the seven yard line of the Colonels. Perry, this time he gives it on the dive to Matthews, and I think that'll be a first down, and it'll be first and goal, depending on the spot. It should be first and goal. They're going to drop the sticks. Yep, first and goal, ball inside. We have a timeout for the officials. They wind it back up. They say, yes, it is a first down. So first and goal from the seven-yard line. This is right where we saw Fitch previously. Yep. Uh, and Ledger dialed up some pressure. Let's see what Ledger does here facing this first and goal. We call this in uh, terminology, turkey deja vu. Gobble, gobble. Perry takes it out of the pocket, breaks a tackle, being pursued. Great weak side close by Adamick. Perry had Matthews on the dive, pulled it, and then broke a tackle. How did he do it? He should have taken off, but the energy coming from the backside from Ledger was great. The pursuit, the rapid tackle, tackle for a loss. Yeah, Adamick came out of the back. You know, he pursued hard and give Perry credit he broke a tackle he probably shouldn't have broken but then what a beautiful job of the pursuit I will give Ledger credit they're crashing the weak side crashing, very well yeah. this defense is about deciding to crash off the edges and try to stop that beer play you know the dives are really going to be effective in this one second and long Perry toss left to fine and fine is hit and brought down immediately. Another loss. Adamick again on that one, along with Crawford, also coming out of the mix. Mm -hmm. Now you're starting to see the Ledger defense kind of get all those butterflies off their chest, and now they're playing some good sound football, wrapping up, being physical. You know, on, on the other side, you see the youth level right here. All these kids are playing football while they're watching the football game. This is a part of Turkey Day tradition, too. <laughs> I, I, I think this is a function that Ledger can be aggressive because yep of them on the goal line. They're yes. not afraid of getting beat over top. If they were this aggressive with the ball at midfield, Perry would throw Perry it over would the top. Throw the ball. You're right. This really shuts down. The option game is really hard in the end zone. It allows Ledger to be hyper aggressive, crashing the edges. Third and goal, ball at the 10-yard line. Perry, little the counter. Play trap counter. Fine breaks a tackle. Touchdown, Adonis Fine. Puts the Falcons on top, 12 to nothing. What a great call, knowing that they've been focusing on dive, beer, and outside edge. Come back with the counter. Wide open, touchdown. Unbelievable job there for the Falcons. If there's a better, by the way, name for a football player than Adonis Fine. Yeah. Both the first name and the last name. Exceptional examples of what he is. Right there, he ran like an Adonis and was, yep. oh, so fine. 319 remaining in the half, 12 nothing. Falcons on top. Let's see if they are gonna go for two. But you were right, the call was absolutely spot on. So the Falcons will go for two. Perry, oh, a little trickery, Cabuso breaks one tackle. The two point conversion is great. Wow, they showed, the reverse. They showed three different plays. Yes. What, they faked the dive, yep. looked like it was gonna be the option. Right. Instead, it's the reverse on the end around. Exactly. That is a lot of offense. Backside edge player had to make the commitment to follow that dive because he said, hey, look, he's not coming. Here comes the pitch to the outside, reverse, touchdown. The and more I, important I, game though right now, yes. coach. More important games going on on the practice field. Right now, I got this game 26-20. Uh, the, the team with the kid in the red hat yes. on top 26-20. The Sandlot Bowl here in Turkey Day. Someone's going to go, go, one of the greatest Thanksgiving games we've ever seen. And they're going to go, yeah, it was. It Mike, was. Mikey scored that late touchdown. Have you seen that? I mean, they got some athleticism. Like, look at him he's running to the inside, cutting out. Yeah. Now, the they're, problem with these games is here's what happens, right? Team A yep. is up 42 to nothing on Team B. That's team right. B goes, all right, next score wins. That's it, pick and choose. <laughs> you know, 
Gotta love Thanksgiving. That's All right, here's love. the here's That's my love. first question of the day. Peter Wapi, do the meat do the uh, various dishes on the plate touch one another on your Thanksgiving? Oh, shoot. That's a good call. Yes, and they are all covered with gravy. Mm. So it is a gravy fest Bonded. on your plate. And as far as you're concerned, <laughs> if if things get all mixed and matched, they're all going to the same place. That's right. Yeah, a little, little gravy on the beans, a little gravy on the, on the corn, the veggies. If, if you have a salad or something, that goes in a side bowl. Oh, my Fair goodness. Fair enough. No, no gravy on the salad? Fair enough. Listen, I haven't eaten anything since last night. My CPAP machine made sure my tummy was wide open today. Line drive kick. Buso taken by Streckfus. And Streckfus is thrown into the ground. Beautiful tackle by Gianni Sosa. <laughs> These Falcons are playing with passion today. This is where Ledger needs Polton mm -hmm. and Green to make a play. James right. Green's nickname is the Playmaker. And you call him the human joystick. He has had no space no. to be the human joystick, and he has to make a play. Ledger down 14 nothing. I love the defense. They're really controlling gaps, and then they're reading their keys off their gaps. You know, it's kind of like the old 4-3, squeezing those defensive linemen in, having the outside linebackers come up, and making sure that they could follow through and pursuit and get number seven down. First down at the 25-yard line. Handoff up the middle, and Green has had no room whatsoever. The Falcon interior line has just been fabulous. Drab, as well as Pedro Torres, have just dominated up front for the Falcons. Yeah, those big boys, if they continue to do what they do and the game ends up like that, they got to get some turkey legs. These Dil big boys are playing today. Dylan Beebe as well. That front group has been dynamic for the Falcons. Second and ten. Hand off to Green. This time Green breaks a couple of tackles and gains six. James Green did that one with two Falcons on his back. Yeah, he's trying to fight. He's trying to break through. There's a flag on the play. Officials are conferring. You know, I like when the officials huddle up like that and they chit-chat and talk. Now they're going to pick the flag up. Oh, it's a disregard. Pick the flag up here. Third down coming up for Ledger. Ball at the 31-yard line. They desperately need something heading into halftime. Right now, the Falcons dominating this effort on both sides of the ball. Green with the handoff, nothing there, and it's going to bring up fourth down. Now, this is just an observation, not a criticism. Mm -hmm. The Falcons and the Colonels run essentially the same offense. Yep. We've called five different player names on the Falcons' offensive side right. of things. Ledger, we've called essentially two. two. Yep. Uh, it is, you know, it is a testament to the diversity of the play calling right now with Fitch. They are making it very difficult for Ledger to know what's coming. I think Fitch feeling a little bit more comfortable knowing key on number seven and exactly. we'll take our chances elsewhere. Exactly. They know they got to stop number seven to keep it going. Ledger's going to go for it here. Fourth down and two. Under two minutes remaining. On the dive. Looks like it's short. And it looks like it's going to be short. They needed to get to the 35 and they're marked just shy of that. We'll see what the final mark is. Crawford on the dive. Ledger thinks they got it. Fitch says no. And Falcons are correct. Falcons hold. What a great defensive effort, Casey. With Unbelievable. 123 remaining in the half. Yeah. The Falcons with a chance to put a, you know, I hate to say it, but put a real yeah. distance between themselves. Ledger, not an offense designed to score quickly. Uh, three scores would be an exceptional amount to overcome. Yeah, they haven't been this uh, behind in a while or all season long. You know, Casey, just to compliment what you're saying, the option game in collegiate level is all about distribution, and that's what the Falcons are doing right now, distributing to the players that they execute. Perry, going to throw deep down the sidelines, has his man, and it's caught. Unbelievable Touchdown. catch! Wow! Kevin Stateville Radix 
with one of the plays of the year. Unbelievable. A dime from Perry and an unbelievable over the shoulder catch in coverage by St. Philaravix and everything going right for the Falcons. Talk about a teardrop, brother. Both defenders were in the right position, one over top, one under, but the concentration to get to the ball and have the hands extended just enough to secure it, unbelievable catch. You're right, it's one of those plays of the years. 20 wow, nothing Falcons, and if that was a teardrop, it's the Colonels right now, though, who are shedding the tears because 20 nothing in the first half. It's tough, and they're going for two. Perry, and he draws him off. That'll move him a little closer. Hard count. So that'll get him to the one and a half yard line. You know, one of the toughest things that a team that's successful comes into with a team that's, you know, just finishing off the season with pride is that when you're hungry like that and you want to give your last efforts to a, a great coaching staff like the Ellis family, you know, they want to play hard. They're showing the character that they're, they, they are all season long. They're a good quality team, and they're not going to take this lightly. And that's why they're up 20 to zip. Perry gives it to Fine, and Fine spins off of multiple tacklers. He's in the end zone for the two-point conversion. 22-20, Falcons. 1-16 remaining in the half. It's all Fitch here on Thanksgiving Day. You're watching Game Day Live on theday.com. can feel it and we know you feel it too fall is here crisp air falling leaves pumpkin everything and football so much football with a new season upon us it's a great opportunity to take a quick time out and make sure your insurance program is in order the burns agency is here to help you play by play strong coverage dependable service and touchdown savings give us a call or visit us online the burns agency proudly serving eastern connecticut since 19 32. Happy Thanksgiving for the Fitch Falcons right now. 22-0 at home in the battle for the sword. Five straight. It hasn't been in legend since 2015, and this group of Falcons is working hard to make sure it remains here on this side. All Falcons so far as they will kick off to Ledger here with 116 remaining in the half. Updates on scores, Killingly 7-0 over Woodstock, Waterford 21-7 over East Lyme, and Westerly up 28-0 over Stonington. Line drive kick, and that's another clear strategy. They have kicked very strategically. Flag comes in as Ledger will have the ball. But the Falcon kicking game has been excellent yeah. as well. They have been very deliberate. Very strategic. It's, it's corner kicks, uh, forcing it to the, to the numbers, which makes the blocking scheme for that really difficult to do. So it's a good strategic move. I got, I got to say, the coaching staff here really worked very hard to have a great game plan right now for this game, and they're dominating in every aspect of the ball. Offense, defense, and special teams have been great for the Falcons today. Hold against Ledger. They have really struggled here on the opening half. They'll be backed up, and I think at this point, they are going to be content to get out of here down 22 nothing and regroup at halftime. But here's the thing. Falcons have some timeouts remaining. If yeah. Ledger, I mean, they're, they're not going to take their foot off the gas. Polton going to throw. Pressured, and he's hit. He tried to get it out in the flat to curse, but he was pressured hard by St. Phil Ravens. Yeah, it looked like it was a screenplay, but when you try to run a screenplay under and you have to drop back, it's not like the old school, brother. Back in the day, we used to do that. These guys are coming fast and hard on the defensive line. Didn't even give them a chance. Second and 10, and Fitch doesn't have to take a timeout. Incomplete pass, so Ledger right now just looking for answers. Option, Lentz, cuts it inside, breaks a tackle, gets to the 20 yard line, great pursuit, not much there. Tackle made on the play for Fitch by Malachi Maddox. Yeah. I mean, they don't have a, a two minute offensive style formation. 
you know, so things like that will be uh, pretty costly right there. And we are winding the clock down. One minute remaining here in the half. 22-0 Falcons on top. Boy, this fan base is unbelievable. The whole Ledger family right now almost have that uh, stands over there filled up. But right over here in front of us, unbelievable numbers, good fan support base, a lot of energy. You know, a lot of it looks like a lot of friends meeting up today. It's another thing that, that I like about uh, Thanksgiving Day is camaraderie where people come from different generations and meet up with players, kind of like an alumni of players that come in to, to enjoy the atmosphere and then talk about their days. You know, just like our friend that scored six touchdowns at Polk High School, you know, when it was only one. You know, a lot of fibs come across during Thanksgiving. Uh, you know, I've lied a couple of times of how I played my game, and I know I wasn't that good. So <laughs> it's great to uh, bring that up. The attendance today listed at just over 2,200. Wow. That's not bad. That's not bad. Well, in fairness, 1,600 of them are here to watch that game that just ended on the practice field. Yeah, that was a high-scoring game over there. Holton going to keep it himself and nothing there. Hit almost immediately by Nas Matthews. And you know, these Falcons kids are playing both ways. Yeah. Matthews and St. Phil Ravix big time on the edge that time. And with a timeout now, Ledger's going to have to punt it away. And Fitch is going to get it back in decent field position with time. Smart move for the Fitch team because this field position right now could be valuable. Again, right now, Ledger's kind of on their heels trying to find something, and it's not working. And the Falcons have some great play calling going on that can get them into the end zone before half. 14-0 NFA on top of New London in the oldest high school football rivalry in the country. In the oldest Thanksgiving Day rivalry, Westerly was on top 28-0 at last check versus Stonington. Ram 27-6 over Bacon Academy. And we had, well, check on scores for Rockville, Killingly, and others at our halftime. Looks like that's going to bring some pressure right now on that punt team. High snap. Lentz gets it off. And he's going to get a penalty as well. That's going to benefit Ledger. Ball will roll to the 50-yard line, but they're going to get a running into the kicker as Lentz got it off. Give him credit. And... Now, that won't be an automatic first down. I was going to say, yeah. Is that the same thing? You know, if he just had contact, it was just contact, so it might be a five-yard penalty. It wasn't flagrant or anything like that. Which, by the way, Ledger could consider declining because the 50-yard line is a pretty good spot yes. with only 40 seconds remaining in the half. I don't know that they want to repunt it, and they did Good move, decline. Casey. You're calling it out. Even though last night you did a go uh, oh, oh, for one with the call last night. You know, that's going to throw it out there. A little Blueberry Hill moment for you there. I, I, you know, I, I, I have a, uh, a closer or a goalkeeper's uh, yeah. memory. I don't remember last night you don't at know. all. It must be the turkey. I don't remember last night. <laughs> hey, speaking of which, my brother Peter, I want to let you know that I was playing with my guys in the BGSG clan uh, that I game with, and they all said down south they love Blueberry Pie, brother. Just want to throw it out there. Yeah, my, my, uh, for you, Peter will appreciate this. My cousin, who is from Maine, uh, his he, well, my cousin married this woman from Maine. They met at the University of Maine up at Orono uh, each year to teach their kids a little bit about hard work. They go up to Maine and make the kids work in the blueberry box. Woo. Perry throws. He's hit as he throws and knocked to the ground. Incomplete. It'll be second down with 34 seconds remaining. Have you ever uh, worked in the blueberry uh, fields there, Peter? Um... Recreationally, I suppose. I, I've heard. 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 I was an amateur. An amateur yeah. blueberry picker. I, I was not paid, or I, I was paid in blueberries. So I, I've been told that it's really hard, yeah, and you basically is. pick for hours. You get a, and you get paid by the by the by the, the, ba the, by yep. the basket bushel by the basket amount, that you bring, and yeah. it's like, <laughs> like you work eight hours and you get seven dollars of the blueberries. <laughs> Perry to throw sets up the screen, has his man Matthews. Matthews is dragged down by Poulton as he crosses the 40-yard line, but it should be enough for a first down for the Falcons, and that'll stop the clock. But there is a flag down on the play, which usually indicates illegal man downfield when you see those screens set up. But this is the key. If they know that it's a screen play, it should be a legal play. It's just that at that time, by the time the receiver caught the ball, the linemen are already down there. So it's going to be a judge of the line coach there. As they huddle up right now, we're going to see if they got that call right. I'm going to say yeah, this is the fourth man. huddle right now with the referees today. They're really working together today. Yeah, well, they, they've also had they had their pregame turkey as well, yeah. so they're all lined up. 
That's the good thing about Thanksgiving, working together as a team. That's there's Illegal Mr. Man Woods. downfield. Yeah. Yep. So the play overdeveloped, and uh, yeah, those linemen were way downfield. That's something that they did in the Sandlot division over here as a couple other kids are getting together. So 24 seconds remaining. Falcons with a 22-0 lead. I, I would be surprised if they did anything other than run the clock out here now that they're backed up a little bit here uh, late. Couldn't have been a better first half oh, for the Falcons. Great job for the Falcons in the first half here, playing with passion and energy. Perry, dive to Matthews, and he is hit, breaks one tackle, falls forward. But barring something unforeseen, that should be the last play of the first half. We will take a break at halftime. We'll come back with the live band performance here of Fitch mm -hmm. at halftime. As the clock ticks to halftime, what a half for the Fitch Falcons. 22-0 over Ledger. Will the Falcons fly or will the Colonels regroup in the Battle of the Sword? It's all second half coming up. You're watching Game Day Live on theday.com. It's time for Game Day's Grade 8 Plays of the Week. Coming in at number 8, New London Football, Jose Rivera shaking off the blocker, fighting his way into the backfield and making the tackle on the edge. All work from Rivera. At number seven, Jackson Poulton, the jump throw off the back foot with pressure. Look at Liam Stalbush come back to the football. Great play. Skylar Bell, volleyball. She might be the libero, but that doesn't mean she can't get up and spike for the kill. At number five, what do you do when you're on your own one yard line? Well, if you're Aiden Johnson, you throw it up top and you trust Anthony Barbudo's gonna go and get it and out race and out fight and out tough. 99 yards for the Mottville touchdown. What a play. Not to be outdone at number four. They call him the playmaker. Maybe the human joystick, James Green. Look at the move. Cuts to the outside, breaking ankles, and gets in for the touchdown. Nate Hines of Waterford, not to be outdone. Might be a quarterback, but look at him run. Gets to the outside, and he is gone, out racing all of Bacon Academy to the end zone for the Lancers. Hey, it's senior day at Bacon Academy, so how about a couple of seniors? Quarterback, Jack Holmes. Wide receiver, Colin Obrius. Great protection up front. The bomb. Touchdown, Bobcats in front of the home crowd. But at number one, it's the Soren Reef Show. Call him the postman, because he always delivers. The beast is going on a bear hunt. One bear, two bear, three bears, four, four bears, three bears, no more. Touchdown, Reef, killingly. Hey, send us your top plays and make the great eight. Thank <laughs> you. 
Kickoff comes down, Quinnebog Valley takes it at the 20 yard line. Breaking a tackle, heading straight up field, down the sideline. Mateo Alvarez, Alvarez crosses the 30, and a big kick return. Motion, Jackson across the right. Out low to keep it, now cuts it back across the green. Beautiful move, breaks some ankles, heads to the outside and bumped out of bounds. Oh, man. Now Justin Outlow, quarterback. Has time, in the flat it goes to Ryan Outlow, and Outlow Wide open. will waltz into the end zone. Outlow to Outlow. Motion, toss, a little fast. trickery, 
but the sack Good job. well in the backfield at the 50-yard wow. line. Sinelli got there first. He's gonna throw. Pressured, steps up, has the first down, shows the legs, cuts across the 20, bounces it outside, Wide open. gets one more block, and waltzes into the end zone. Touchdown, Justin Outlow. Hands off to Cunningham, off right tackle. Cuts it outside and breaks a tackle, still on his feet. One more to beat and wrestled down at the five-yard line. Outlow on the trap to Ryan Outlow, and Outlow is going to cut it back and waltz into the end zone with a little shoulder boom. Outlow to throw here on third down. Pressure. Rolls. Launches it deep downfield and brought down by Eddie at the 22-yard line. Think about what that means for Thames River. Outlow is going to keep it himself straight up the field. Big hole. Outlow on his feet and gets back almost to the original line of scrimmage. I believe he does. Wow. It'll bring up second and ten. So Cunningham on first down. Breaks tackle. Breaks another tackle. What an individual effort. Touchdown, Seth Cunningham. Second down. High snap. Pressure. Blitz. And they get him back at the 22-yard line. Rushing in was Caleb Del Mestro. Pitch right goes to Cunningham. He's got a big hole, breaks off a tackle. Stiff arms one, breaks another tackle. He is not going to be denied. Touchdown, Seth Cunningham. One man show on that long touchdown run. Senior leadership. The three-headed monster, Seth Cunningham, Justin Outlow, Ryan Outlow, capping off a 10-0 season for Thames River. Doing a little bit of everything tonight. I just want to start with you, Seth. You know, you're a senior. We talked last time about this. Just put into perspective, 10 and 0, and head into the postseason. Feels amazing. Uh, never been done before in program history. Never done before, uh, obviously, when I've been here. And uh, last year we were close, but we couldn't get it done. We couldn't get the final game done. And uh, feels amazing. Feels amazing going to the postseason, healthy, and uh, ready to win a wing. Justin, it was. Last time we saw you, you were playing wide receiver tonight, quarterback, you threw, you ran, you did a little bit of everything. Heading into the postseason, there's a good chance you guys will have a home game. What would it be like to play in front of these fans in a postseason game? Uh, first off, I just want to say all glory to God. Nothing would be possible without him. Uh, to be able to play in front of our uh, fans that have done so much for us, like all the momentum we get is because of them, it would will, it will be a true honor, something I want to experience, and uh, just – it will be very, very, we'd be very, very fortunate to experience a home playoff game. Ryan, I like to say that you run angry, looking for contact. You've been a part of some special backfields in your time. Talk a little bit about what you've been able to do this year with a little bit of the burden off of you and with these two talented men next to you. Um, obviously, you know, my freshman year I was at NFA. I ran with Xavier Fonville, and I didn't have a really big of a load. I was pretty much a goal line back. But um, and then my sophomore year I didn't play. Junior year I had James, I had Jackson, you know, the ledger guys. Um, and now this year I got Seth, I got Justin. Like, it's it's very dynamic to to know that you have other guys around you that, that can that can carry the load as well. Um, it feels great, you know. I've had a lot of experience playing with other very well, very good backs. Um, and and it feels great to know that that. If, if, you're, if I'm not getting the ball, we can still get a lot of yards, and we, we block that way for each other. It's, it's all We're all in. It's all for each other. It's TRC pride. So going into the postseason, a lot is going to be said about you know 10-0, but against teams unlike the ones you're going to see in the postseason. Tonight we saw some penalties. We saw some snap issues, obviously some things to clean up. Where is the, What's the next step for you to prepare as a team for a postseason vid? Uh, just getting polished uh, everything up. We can play with anybody in our division and uh, really confident we can win a state championship. The talent we have and the uh, work ethic we have. What is one thing that you are most looking forward to Tuesday night under the lights, a team that doesn't know who you guys are, what's one thing you're looking forward to that night? Uh, there's a couple things I'm looking forward to. Obviously, I've never experienced a state playoff game. You know, um, my brother Marcus, he's always talked about his experience playing uh, in a state playoff game in a state championship. So that's one of the things I want to experience. And another thing I want to experience is I played quarterback today, and you know I've been playing receiver. So another thing I'm looking forward to is Jack Philistine coming back. <laughs> Absolutely. Get you back out there catching footballs. Ryan, my last question for you guys. Some team's going to be coming in here Tuesday night and they're going to think they know what you guys are about. What's something that they don't know that you're bringing on Tuesday? 
they um they're gonna think we're a tech school we have that label but we we we, we put on the pads like everybody else and we will punch you in the mouth if you think we're sweet we're, we have big aspirations it's always been you know it's bigger than whoever we play but now it's we got three more so the, if someone takes us lightly you will get punched in the mouth trust me Undefeated, 10-0, postseason. The Crusaders are heading there. You guys get to enjoy Thanksgiving tomorrow. Enjoy the season. You guys have had a real special year. Congratulations. We're at halftime here at Fitch High School. You're watching Game Day live on the day.com. Game Day is brought to you by Waterford Dental Health. Right now, the Fitch Falcons with big smiles. Well, your smile is Waterford Dental Health's top priority. They have a team dedicated to providing you all the gentle, personalized care you deserve. So you should contact them today. Visit WaterfordDentalHealth.com for more information. After the game, you're going to want to find us on all our social media platforms at Game Day CT, and you're going to see our interview with the Foxwoods player of the game. At the center of it all, Foxwoods Resort and Casino. Upcoming events, the Beach Boys featuring the Holiday Vibrations Orchestra. That's November 26th. Tickets on sale now. For more details, visit Foxwoods.com slash entertainment because it's only at Foxwoods Resort Casino. The wonder of it all. Casey O'Neill, Pasta Santa Bria, 22 nothing Falcons. I don't know if that Fitch has played, and I'll ask, ask Coach Ellis, if have they played a better first half. I'm talking all facets of the game. Their, yeah. their kicking game was fabulous. The strategic kickoffs, their uh, diversity of their play calling, the defense. I thought the Falcons executed brilliantly. On the other side of things, Ledger, they're going to get the ball here to start the second half. They need to score on this possession. Yes, they do. Uh, because they're not built for quick strikes, and their defense has shown no indication they can stop Fitch. No, definitely. Great great coaching staff uh, uh, adjustments that have been made to get ready for this game. Cabuso kicks off. Low. Lentz takes it at the 30-yard line. Heads to the outside. Now cuts it inside. Gets a block and dragged down from behind. But we're going to get a flag. They're going to call a block in the back, I believe. And that's going to back up Ledger a little bit. But they should still have decent field position. They'll probably end up at around the 30-yard line. Yeah, the Ledger team has to definitely play, you know, clean, flag-free football to make sure that they can get all these executions in place and get this point to a, at least a competitive scoring game. Um, but again, you know, the coaching staff from Fitch did a great job to, you know, strategize these things. You know, the kicking game you wouldn't think would be important, but the way they're kicking it to make sure that they gain control for no explosive plays is really important. And defensively, they're just playing dominant football. And offense, we talked about diversity in the option game. That's very explosive for any team that runs that kind of system. So, you know, Fitch is running the show right now. I was wrong. The ball will be marked at the 29-yard line. Off by a yard, but the Colonels have it at their own 30-yard line. They need to get James Green and company going here to start the second half. Motion. Handoff Green breaks a tackle, breaks another tackle. There he shows the speed. Human joystick gets to the outside and the playmaker. And we're going to get a flag out of bounds. No, we're not. Good. I like that no call right there, but that's a big play for Green and the Colonels. What was different? Right there, the blocking scheme. A good, strong wash and push down the line. I think that Fitch came in and said, oh, we're going to do the same thing. But, you know, Ledger was tough on that play and gave James Green that second level opportunity. This is why I talk. When James gets to that second level, man, he can make cuts and moves that are phenomenal. And that's what he did right there for a big game. I felt like he paused. Yep. Gave his blocking a chance to sort of set itself up. That one second little delay. Big play on first down for Ledger. Lentz in motion. This time, pitch right to Lentz on the edge. Gets a block. Shows speed. Heads to the outside. Lentz inside the 10-yard line. First and goal, Ledger. Back-to-back -back big plays. Green and Lentz. And the Colonels are cooking to start the second half. And this is the spirit that we were looking for the Colonels in the first half. That fast attack offense. The same replica that that Fitch was doing. They're doing it now to Fitch. First and goal. And just what Ledger needed coming out here to start the second half. I got to throw it out there. That halftime pecan pie got my sugar level up to about 400, and maybe that's what the Colonels needed, a little pecan pie love. They might have been eating pecan pie in the, in the locker room at halftime. No, we they, don't know. We don't know, but something's happening right now because there's a resurgence for the Colonels right now. They need to punch this one in, though. First and goal hasn't gotten them anything just yet. Handoff, Green, off tackle right, puts his head down, reaches for the end zone. Touchdown, Colonels. Three-play drive. Wow. Green, Lentz, Green, six. Woo. Colonels on the board, 22-6 Falcons. 
Man, it ain't over till there's three zeros left in the clock. And to start the second half the way you said it, you called it. They had to score, and they did it in three plays. Boy, this second half is going to be really treacherous. <laughs> now, if the Ledger defense can get a stop, we can have a conversation about yep. this game becoming more competitive. Right now, it's 22-6. Ledger going for two here. Polton under center. Gives it to Green. Green busted outside. You ain't going to stop him there. Two points good. 22-8. Colonels roll out here in the second half. Wow. And exactly what the doctor ordered. What a big difference. The, the legend team is running out with some energy. The Falcons are walking and saying, what the heck just happened? I didn't get any of that pecan pie. We got some score updates, Peter Wappi. Waterford 21, East Lime 14, Killingly 28, Woodstock 0, and Griswold 21 to 0 over Plainfield. Is that right? Yes. I tell you, that East Lime Waterford game, talk about tradition. <laughs> you thought it was over from the first half, but East Lime is tight right there. A lot of good games Thanksgiving Day around the state. Rockville and Ellington. Rockville was up 12 7. Law was up 21 4, uh, 21 15 on foreign in other games that will affect the playoff standings and the seedings for our locals. Ledger needs a win today or a loss from Ellington uh, and to get in for sure. And right now uh, they are trailing here, obviously 22 to eight and Ellington was in a battle. Nice game between Rockville and Ellington right now. You called it, Case. Right now, what we need is a good defensive series for Ledger to stop the Fitch offense and get good field position to get that ball back. I love what I saw from Ledger offensively. Now the defense, can they do something different? And what is it they try to stop? The kick comes down and taken by Cabuso. And he's hit immediately at the 30. So the energy level of the Colonels definitely has oh, yeah. risen here in the second half. Now let's see if the Falcons match it Offensively, they had all the answers in the first half. What will Ledger do differently? What's the counter from Fitch? Well, I'll tell you, Ledger right now has to play that sound defense and be aggressive. Penetrate through the line of scrimmage, get to the heels of the offensive lineman, and make sure you get a good pursuit. Squeeze off the edges. If the guard's pulling, smash him right in the jaw and squeeze that ball down. That's what they need to do. Perry, toss left, fine. Big hole, first down, gain for fine. Adonis Fine will get to the 35-yard line, a good gain for the Falcons. Seems like both running backs on both teams, when they get to that second level, have great skills to cut, move, pivot, spin. I mean, things that are like just, again, joystick mode in the game of football. Ellington leading 14-12 at halftime. So Ellington on top now at halftime over Rockville, so Ledger imperative that they turn this thing here around in the second half second down play dive Matthews Colonels read it they sent a run blitz and they guessed correctly it's going to be third and long for the Falcons that was what we were talking about penetrating through the line of scrimmage getting to the heels making sure you get to the mesh point that's what the Colonels did there and then when they wrapped up they collapsed that back down to the ground Talk about a second half energy surge that's coming from the Colonel's side. This game is going to be great to the very end. Third down and five. And at this field position, it'll be very interesting how the Falcons, Coach Ellis and Coach McCoy, treat this right here. Do they run it here, punt it away, run it twice? I love the possibilities. Ball on the turf. Perry couldn't handle it cleanly, but he picks it up. And with his forward motion, I think he's going to have the first down. Credit Ben Perry with just absolute, you know, toughness and awareness on third down. I think he's short, and he is fourth and a foot. Falcons want to get right up and run it. Will they go hard count? Will they go quarterback sneak? Perry's going to go under center, a rarity for him. Gets it, plows forward, no momentum. No momentum. Ledger says they stopped him, it's gonna be about the spot. The side judge on this side is a little bit under that flag for the first down. Let's see what's gonna happen. We're waiting for the judge to make the call. Wait till you see the Colonels react if they held. They think they have. Fitch thinks they got it. It's all about the official's mark. 
Ledger just pointing right now to see they got that uh, stop. Now they're going to measure it, brother. This is the critical part. Boy, I shouldn't have had that pecan pie, brother. You got my toes all up in the air right here. <laughs> they are putting it on the ground. Are they going to use an index card if it gets that close? Chains are going to come out. This is going to be remarkably close. Everybody's quiet at this time, waiting for that mark. First down. First down. It looks like first down, Fitch. First down, Ooh, Falcon. Wow. Game <laughs> of inches. How about a chain link? A chain link. Wow. What a positive series for the Falcon right now. But Ledger has to feel good about that series as well. Now they need to capitalize. Yeah. Falcons with the energy and the momentum off of the great first down, and they'll send Perry, who has been fabulous here so far in the ball game. Perry keeps it himself, breaks two tackles, falls forward for a gain of a yard. Crawford tripped him up in the backfield, wow. but Perry got a yard. That shoelace tackle was definitely needed because there was open space for Perry to fly. And it's the spot gives him three yard gain on first down. I, I think that's all just forward, not for momentum, yeah. just falling forward for three falling yards. Forward. He got tripped and fell forward. Wow, the fan base right now is up, standing, and roaring. Both fan bases are really involved in this game. Second and seven. Perry, toss left to Fine. Fine, trying to get outside. Good pursuit, and he'll get to the 45-yard line. It's going to bring up third and four for the Falcons. This is a very important uh, down for Ledger right now. They got to stop him in order to get a chance to get that ball back. Field position doesn't matter at this time as they're in the middle of the field. Third and five. What will the Falcons draw up? And I think you're going to see Ledger pressure here. Crashing the edges. Run, I think you're going to see run blitz up the middle. They're going to sell out. The question becomes, does Fitch do the play action? You know, I feel it in my bones right now. If they do a play action with the safeties playing where they're playing at, is really lethal. There's also a one-to-one -one matchup off the edge. Dive, Matthews just at the stick. I think he fell forward yep. with enough for the first down. So they went, they went straight to the Matthews dive. Yep. Veered it right off the off tackle where they knew that they were penetrating. And got the first down. First down Falcons and now Ledger, the defense here Better, but still nothing to show for it. Multiple first downs, the yeah. Falcons moving the sticks. It's all about tackling. You know, they get that first level tack tackle, they can really hold them down, but these running backs are running hard today. Unbelievable effort, and the diversity that's being distributed off this offense is, is really what's critical right now uh, for the Falcons. First down, ball just on the 49-yard line of Fitch, almost into Ledger territory. Perry, toss left to Fine, and Fine is hit immediately right at the line of scrimmage. That's a great defensive read and key. They knew that was coming right off the rip, and this is what Ledger needs to do. Team gang tackling, wrap up and secure him from not penetrating downfield. Now it's a second and long situation, favoring right now for Ledger. Wyatt Crawford much more active here starting the second half, flying to the football. He and James Green along with Jackson Barbosa flying to that football there. They're going to give Fine a gain of a yard just on the midfield marker. It's going to be second and nine. But with, like you say, the way the clock moves in this game, it's flying. you're pretty close to needing a stop. Fine in motion, fakes the toss, Perry rolls, looking, patient, jumps, throws, and it's intercepted! Intercepted! Down the sideline goes Jacob Lentz! Jacob Lentz picks! Six! What a, what a play! Back in it! What a change of events! The Colonels right back into the game as Jacob Lentz picks six, 50 yards! 22-14, Falcons are stunned. Brother, that was a great defensive coverage. Again, back to the play before, the fullback was let free, and they were going after the quarterback. Perry was patient, but he didn't realize that linebacker was right there with him. So when he threw that ball soft, he took that ball and picked it off and ran like a track star to the end zone.
What a turnaround in this game. Boy, happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Now all of a sudden, with a one-score game, it is, there, there's no more urgency. It's now a football game. Now it's a smash mouth, Rocky Balboa, you know, second half. Who's going to have the guts and heart to finish strong? And they're going to go in for the extra point this time. They're going to go for two. Colton under center. They got the power eye. And a flag on the play. That's going to be delay a game, or are they going to? Flag on the play. A flag against Ledger, that's going to back them up five. Now, it's interesting because they got the two-point conversion the first time. This is normally a spot where I would expect them to kick. If they can get this extra point, it makes it an interesting... I was counting along, and I think what happened was that when they brought that extra lineman in as the fullback, they didn't take a player out, so there might have been 12 men on the field there. Absolutely. So Wanamaker... In Lucas Wanamaker, the sophomore, in to kick the extra point. Good snap, good hold, kick is up, and it's not going to get there. It is almost blocked, so good rush coming by Johnny Sosa. Pressured the kick, and that's going to leave Ledger on the outside looking in. A two-point conversion and a touchdown away. But 22-0, everything going the Falcons' way. Two possessions in the second half, an offensive touchdown and a defensive touchdown. Colonel's right back in. Brother, all I got to say is a pecan pie turnaround. That's what it was about. Oh, my God, the energy that they came out in the second half, the offensive drive that kept that energy back there, the fan base coming into the game. You know, just this is what it's all about with Thanksgiving football. Never underestimate, you know, when there's time on the clock, you know, the only way you could establish anything is when there's three zeros left in the clock. But for now, with 5-0-8 in the third quarter, man, this is a ball game now. We got rocking and rolling. What a pick six play. Unbelievable. Mike Ellis is one of, uh, not, well, not only one of my favorite coaches, but uh, he has provided us some of the great game day moments in history. His halftime speeches are renowned. His behavior on the sidelines, whether it's playing with pizzazz, or just his, you know, positive energy. I promise you that he on the sideline right now is in the face of every one of his players, yes, to letting them know that now is the time to step up and not shrink away. McCoy takes the extra, takes the kickoff rather, and takes it to the 40-yard line. So Falcons will have it first and ten on their own 40. 5:03 remaining here in the third period, and the Ledger defense back on the field flying high at the moment. Again, they need another strong defensive series of good team tackling and making sure they stop these basic plays. They're basic plays that of attack for Falcons, but the diversity there, read and react and attack. That's what they have to do to get it done. And while they probably could give up a score, they can't give up a sustained drive score. Right. They, they, they really need to kind of stay right within this one score. Toss left to Fine. Big hole to the outside. There goes Adonis Fine, and Poulton wrestles him down at the 40-yard line. Big gain by Adonis Fine, and a touchdown-saving tackle from Jackson Poulton. Boy, they were mismatched off the edge. The corner was inside, so when that pull came around the corner, that defensive end couldn't do anything. Running out the outside and getting some yardage, it was a great play for the Falcons. I don't believe I'm going to say this, but... The fact that it was only a 20-yard gain is probably the best that the Colonels could have exactly. hoped for. Great that, effort. That toss came, you immediately saw yeah. the whole field. Hold the whole field, yeah. Jackson did a great effort making that tackle to keep it alive. Perry, fullback dive. Big hole. First down, balls on turf. And he recovers it, I believe. St. Phil Ravix had it. I believe he recovered his own fumble. That is the biggest difference between grass and turf. I've always said it. If that was a turf play, that would have slid all the way to the end zone. People would have been fighting for the ball. But because it was grass, the ball was dead. He had a chance to recover and fall right on it. Huge hole Woo! for St. Phil Ravix. And he is inside the 20 down to the 14-yard line. So Falcons responding well on their offensive series. Knocking on the door. They're in the red zone. Perry, handoff, St. Phil Ravix breaks a tackle. He'll be close to a first down. It might be enough at the five. It might be second and a yard, but they can get a first down before the touchdown. 
ground and pound offense. Great job. I got to give credit to the offensive line on that play. They're picking it up right now. They're giving each other high fives. They're digging it. They said, let's take this into the end zone, boys, as they're pushing the offense, the defensive line for the, the Colonels at this time. What a game. Both fans are just ripping and roaring. Place is high, and the sun is shining right in the middle of the field. Green comes out of the ball game for Ledger. That's to note. Replaced by Donovan Green, a junior. So Green with an E in for Green without an E. And the trainer is heading over to the Ledger sideline. They want him to attend. They want James Green to get attended to. He's doing push-ups on the sideline, but, it's, <laughs> his hand, but his hand is bothering him. Yeah. What a kid, I love him. <laughs> if, that's, if, that's, if that's to indicate, I'm not hurt. <laughs> Second down. Perry on the dive. Ravix will have it right on the goal line. It's going to be first and goal. Falcons at the two. Way to come back, Falcons, as far as that's, this series is important for them, just as anything else in this game. They have to get a score here to keep that spread apart and make the Colonels just fight along another wave. I'm here with two minutes on the clock right now, with 2.50 on the clock. They're munching down time. Falcons do exactly what they needed to do on this possession, which was to go right down the length of the field. If they can punch it in, it'll be back to a two-score game and give them a little bit of breathing room as we head towards the end of the third period. Dive. Touchdown, Falcons! Nice play. A misdirection with the wing back coming in. They let the jet sweep go by, and they all follow the jet sweep, and the dive on the inside. No one was there. Good job, Falcons. 28-14, back to a two-score game. The Falcons go right down the field, 226 remaining here in the third period. Coach gave him the play right now. Looks like they're going for two right now, Case. Going for two. Perry has Matthews as his fullback. Handoff from Matthews. And looks like he's in for the two-point conversion. 30 for the Falcons. 14 for the Colonels. Colonels will have a crucial possession. We'll be back with that right after this. You're watching Game Day Live on the day.com. Feel it, and we know you feel it too. Fall is here. Crisp air, falling leaves, pumpkin everything, and football. So much football. With a new season upon us, it's a great opportunity to take a quick time out and make sure your insurance program is in order. The Burns Agency is here to help you play by play. Strong coverage, dependable service, and touchdown savings. Give us a call or visit us online. The Burns Agency, proudly serving Eastern Connecticut since 1932. 226 remaining in the third. Fitch with a huge drive. Back on top, two scores, 30 to 14 over the Colonels. Ledger about to receive the kickoff and see what they can make happen. Some other scores, killingly 28-0 over Woodstock at halftime. Ellington on top of Rockville at half, 14-12. Law, 28-4-22 in a great game. Waterford, 28, East Lime, 21 in a big battle. Rivalry day here on Thanksgiving. Well, this has been a, a back and forth battle with the energy just flowing in this second half. A lot better than the first. We thought the first was great. This second half has been really good. Caboose, line drive off of Lentz's leg. Picked up by Green. Green breaks a tackle. And it'll be about the 30 yard line where the Colonels will set up shot. Rockville just scored. They're back on top of Ellington. The score 20 to 14. That's definitely, definitely favoring Ledger right now. Ledger, after this performance, showing life, but down now 30 to 14. They need Rockville to hold on against Ellington if they can't come back in this one. 
They scored on three plays in their opening possession of the second half. Let's see what they do here on their second offensive possession. Polton has Green in the backfield, double wing. Lentz in motion. Polton rolls, gonna throw, has a man. It's Barbosa at midfield, caught. Jackson Barbosa with a ledger first down into Falcon territory. Great start of this play. You throw a pass in the first when you had a stacked defense. Awesome call. That moves him over to the other side of the ball. First and ten for the Colonels. And they're in hurry up because they want to get as many plays off here down two scores. Polton barking out signals. Again, Lentz in motion. Pitch right to Lentz. Has the sideline. First down. Jacob Lentz is gone. Touchdown. A play. Colonels, five plays, two touchdowns. Buckle up because Thanksgiving's getting interesting here oh at Fitch. Oh, my God. Jackson, what a great job, young man. You sucked in the linebacker and the edge player. Got yourself knocked but you pitched the ball right on time, and that track performance right off the edge, going into the end zone. Boy, this game is phenomenal, man. Awesome energy today. 30 that to 20, and the Colonels will go for two. Woo, I'm gonna get another slice of that pecan pie. Let's you are this. barred. Oh my God. You are barred from me back. all sugar for the okay. remainder of the day. Yeah, I gotta make sure, because boy, I'm up at the 400 level right now. That was a great play. Woo! Both offenses showing their versatility here. Going for two of the Colonels. Hand off Green. He's gonna have to reach, break a tackle. Did he get there? Yes, he did! The playmaker gets the two point conversion for the Colonels. 30 to 22, Ledger hanging around. Wow, what a fight here. There's something about Thanksgiving Day. I'll tell you, that energy, and Ledger Colonels are running off the field. Fitch right now is walking and just kind of confused about how that happened. But again, it was just a disciplined situation. That corner should have just stayed there and worked on the pitch, but he didn't. He thought they can go right after Jackson. Jackson sacrificed himself, and that's one of the things about the option game. Those quarterbacks take a beating during the game. They know they have to make that commitment. And when he made that pitch, clear sailings for the Colonels, man. First half, Ledger inept on offense, could not move the football. In the second half, they have run five offensive plays. That's it. Green, Lentz, Green, Lentz, pass to Barbosa, two that's touchdowns. Add a pick six, and that's what's got the Colonels back in it. Now they've got one stop. I would argue they haven't even gotten a stop. They got a pick six. Yep. They haven't stopped them no. defensively. They're going to need to. They need to have a good series right here to at least keep them contained because that last quarter coming up is going to be clock management. Wall in the middle, covered by the Falcons. They'll have it at the 35. Rockville, 28-14 over Ellington, starting to pull away a little bit, which would be a break here for the Colonels if they cannot come back and win this game against Fitch. That would be the alternative method for them to get into the postseason. Law 35, four and 22. So Law pulling away from foreign as well. And that game, Casey, probably decides the number one seed in the class double S. Uh, if foreign were to lose, I believe Cromwell slides into the number one slot. And if Ledger loses and gets in, they're going to play one of those two teams. Yeah, Valley and Ledger with a Ledger loss could be at the 7 and the 8, likely to play Cromwell, one of them. And there's going to be a penalty against Fitch. They had two men moving at the same time, so they'll get an illegal procedure penalty against them. That'll back them up first and 15. And if Ledger could ever get the football back yeah. with a chance to tie this game, oh boy, this crowd will be somehow more energetic than it is now. I folded my chair. I'm standing up for the rest of this game right now. In the oldest high school football rivalry in the country, NFA 27, New London nothing. First down, 15 for the Falcons. Perry, toss to Cabuso. Good pursuit, 
And he'll get almost back to the original line of scrimmage. It should be second and 11 for the Falcons. Yeah, these Colonels right now are working on those fundamentals. Getting off the blocks, team tackling. They got to keep this rolling right now to sustain this uh, defensive effort right now. They're in a good position with the second and long right now for uh, the Falcons. Under a minute remaining here in the third period. What a ball game this has turned into. 30 to 22. Falcons on top facing a second and 12. And this is a huge play because for the Falcons, third and long is not ideal. Ledger here has to dial something up. Option, there's, the there's that counter and it's wide open. And Caboose will get Almost. up to the 45 yard line. It's going to be third and short. There's a big play. What an opportune time for the counter. That counter play is so lethal. I've had more heartaches with the counter play against Fitch. You know, they have a way of throwing it when they have to. And in this situation, that's very critical to have now a third and short heading into the fourth quarter, raising those hands up with the four fingers up there. This is going to be a great, great final quarter of football here on Thanksgiving Day. 30-22 Falcons, huge third down coming up. Fourth quarter action coming up. It's all going to be live. You're watching Game Day live on the day.com. can feel it and we know you feel it too fall is here crisp air falling leaves pumpkin everything and football so much football with a new season upon us it's a great opportunity to take a quick time out and make sure your insurance program is in order the burns agency is here to help you play by play strong coverage dependable service and touchdown savings give us a call or visit us online the burns agency proudly serving eastern connecticut since 19. 32. Game day is brought to you by Waterford Dental Health. All that's good begins with a smile, and when you visit our office, your smile's our top priority. Our entire team is dedicated to providing you the personalized gentle care that you deserve. Contact us today at waterforddentalhealth.com for more information. After the game, social media, Game Day CT, Foxwoods Player of the Game, interview with the coach. Foxwood Resort Casino. The Falcons. Falcons, third and three. Ball at the 44. Jet sweep, fine, stutter steps, first down midfield, and tackled well out of bounds. Looking for a flag, the officials didn't throw it the last time, and they're gonna let this one go as well. What patience in that run right there. He definitely needed to respect and have his blockers work on that. And as soon as that guy got sealed off the corner, he took the Jets, got the first down. Yeah, I, I love that uh, analysis there, Pasta. He hesitated yep. long enough to let his blockers get where they needed to go. At first, it looked like Ledger had it strung out really Perfect. well. Yeah. Very patient run from Adonis Fine. I'll tell you, this is like a Rocky Balboa sensation here. Everybody is ripping and roaring. Even the tackle out of bounds. Players are defending their players. This is a really good energetic game today. I'm going to give the officiating crew a giant prop here after this play. Perry keeps it himself, and he'll fall forward for four, but Crawford had him in the backfield, and the difference between second and 12 and second and eight yep. is Ben Perry's strength. Yeah, Perry's feeling it right now. He's wrapping his neck around there. This kid's got a lot of grit, a lot of passion. It's in his bloodline. They're fighters out there. These Falcons are not giving up. I'll tell you, after this game, these guys are going to be eating their meals a little bit slow. There are a lot of bruises and banging going on here. Yeah, kudos to both teams for fighting resiliently like this. This has been a really good game today. Second and nine. I want to give the officiating crew credit. We've had two tackles out of bounds both directions. No flags. Don't let the, you know, when it's not necessary, they calm the kids down. This is not an ill-played game. There's right. no malice. Don't make it about that. Fullback dive. No, they're going to. They stuffed the counter this time. They got it. The counter came. <laughs> and you saw it. They were ready for it that time. Nothing there for Cabuso. When we Check that. We definitely like to make sure that the defensive linemen don't go penetrating up the field. And that one, they stay right up to the heels of the offensive linemen, and they squeeze that play down, Case. Adonis fine on the counter that time. But third and nine, ball just inside of midfield. I am, you know, man, talk about how one thing will affect another. I can see every single possibility here. <laughs> yeah. I can see Fitch going for it. I can see Fitch punting. I can see... 
third and I can see fourth and a yard. I can see fourth and ten. Everything is on the table right now. They have that same formation that they had before that did the jet sweep. Let's see if they do it again. Perry. Dive. Ravix. Wrestled to the ground. No gain. Adamick on the tackle for the Colonels. Fourth and ten. Will the Falcons punt? Will the Falcons go? Ledger's offense has been completely different here oh, in the yeah. second half. Do they want to try to give the ball back to the Colonels? Perry is really killing himself because he knew if he pulled out, he had a lane. So he understands that. Maybe that next series they get, he'll keep that ball. Perry will punt it away. Got to be alert. Perry is punting it away. He can actually throw here. This is the thing about football. You can have anything happen around this time. The playmaker stands at his own 20. The ten, you can feel the energy. Perry, snap is good. Punt goes up. Bounces at the 30-yard line and takes a ledger bounce. The Colonels will have it at their own 35. Down eight. Nine and a half minutes remaining in this ball game. And it just gets better and better. The Colonels are already just lining up. They want to play. You know, a, you know, complimenting again, these referees are playing this well-played ref game. They're on the ball and everything. I know they're communicating with those guys on the field and keeping it nice and neutral. Polton. Lentz goes in motion. Option Lentz. Breaks another tackle. Shows the speed. Gets to the outside. One man to beat. Stiff arm. Down at the 20. 16 yard line. What? Jacob Lentz. Play, brother. Again, the outside pitch. Jackson Poulton sees it. Lentz, who was tackled very hard at the 16, is down on the field. They are going to attend to him. While they attend to Lent, we will take a quick break. You're watching Game Day live on the day.com. can feel it and we know you feel it too fall is here crisp air falling leaves pumpkin everything and football so much football with a new season upon us it's a great opportunity to take a quick time out and make sure your insurance program is in order the burns agency is here to help you play by play strong coverage dependable service and touchdown savings give us a call or visit us online the burns agency proudly serving eastern connecticut since 19. 32. Jacob Lentz is walking off the field, just got the wind knocked out of him on the sideline after a big run gets Ledger in the red zone there at the 17-yard line. First and 10, Colonels 30-22 to with 9-10 remaining. Now, with Lentz out of the game, does Fitch key elsewhere, right? It's been Lentz on the outside, Green on the inside. They Ledger jumped into the wishbone right now. Hand off Green, breaks the tackle, cuts it back inside. The playmaker wow! makes plays, joystick, and the ankles of the Falcons bend. The Colonels are within two. A double cutback move, which is unique. This is probably a perk that he received while he's playing the game. Cuts with one, then he plants and cuts back to the other, goes backside where the safety overran it, and clean it to the end zone. Boy, what a play. This, both teams are really rocking it today. I'll tell you what, we often talk about we have the great eight plays of the week. The great eight, half of them could come out of this game alone. Yeah. We have seen some remarkable plays in this game. Two-point conversion for Ledger. Can they climb the mountain and even it up? Polton rolls, has Barbosa, but he's hit as he throws and buried. Barbosa was open in the end zone, but St. Phil Ravix buried Polton, and the Colonels are down two. They're going to need a stop again. Great play by Kevin. The edge player, offensive tackle, missed him on a swim technique. Full speed to Polton. Polton didn't have a chance. And Barbosa wide open in the end zone. If Polton could have had an extra second, that would have been an easy two-point conversion. Boy, what an energy. What a synergy. Oh, my God. The turkeys are still in the oven, everybody. Make sure you're basting them. 
But while we have time here, make sure the gravy's not getting too thick where it's burning from the bottom. That's right. Right now, this game is single-handedly wow. ruining Thanksgiving dinners around the state. Yeah, they're just staying right on the mic. I can't, I can't even look. I'm standing. I can't sit down, brother. Oh, my God. That pecan got me rolling. My sugar level, I just checked it. It's down to 350. Mem memo for future games. No, no pecan pie allowed. <laughs> if if you're sugar-free, I'm down with it, though. <laughs> there are f a few things in life that make no sense to me. <laughs> Non-alcoholic beer. That's right. And sugar-free desserts. Pots. Yeah. I did not. They're out there, though. They're out there. I don't like them. I stick with the OGs. I just cut the size down. That's all. Wanamaker kicking off for Ledger. Line drive Line on drive the ground, hard kick, picked up, and returned to the 40-yard line by Cabuso. And here come the Falcons. That's right. They need a drive. Nine minutes remaining in the game. They held. Ledger has got it all the way. The 30 to 28 it was, believe it or not, it was a blowout in the first a half. blowout in the first half. <laughs> <laughs> this is very important for the Falcons right now. They know they have some place that could be very effective. And I know Perry realized before that he gave that fullback the ball when he pulled it out. Let's see if he's smart enough to read it and make the right call. 22-0 Falcons at halftime. 30-28 to now. There's the dive to St. Bill Ravix and a good job by the Colonels. They hold him to two. Crawford was the first man to get them, it'll be second and eight. Man, these running backs are giving their very best. And these offensive linemen, I know their knuckles are probably bleeding right now and they're sore, but as you can see, they're just gearing up. The defense right now for the Colonels, they're flying around. They gotta make sure that they team, wrap, and tackle. And be aware that a play action could come at any time and also be prepared for that counter coming back. What a great battle on the line between rush check and drab all day long. Second down, dive again. Big hole, first down, Ravix. St. Phil Ravix crosses midfield into Ledger territory. Coach Ellis is keeping the uppercut in play. That dive play is phenomenal, man. That young man is running hard. We saw Nas Matthews predominantly in the first half. The second half, it has been St. Phil Ravix. Regardless, first down Falcons into Ledger territory. They made a personnel change right here for the Falcons. Twin receivers, Motion Man Cabuso, toss right, he goes. Five yards before he's even touched and seven on the play. That's a very special play, and I know Coach Ellis has done this before in the past. He takes two receivers to the wide side, line them side by side. One is ineligible, but the goal is to get them to block the perimeter right off the rip. That's why he has them both lined up. It's not going to be a pass play, but that does give that outside run position a good chance with the blocking that they were providing there, and that's why they got those plus yardages. Big gain. Ledger, after climbing and scratching and clawing and getting to within two, now is faced with the defense needing to step up. Second and three for the Falcons. Dive, St. Phil Ravix, first down. We have a flag on the play. Flag comes in, we'll see what that's about. If it's a hold, it's going to back him up. It's a side judge there. It's going to be a, a legal procedure against the Falcons. Somebody moves that negates a first down run, and it takes it from second and, well, it takes it from what would have been a first down. Now it's going to be second and eight. So, Casey, we were talking about those two receivers being right on the line. At that time, that receiver did not line up on the line that made four bit backs in the backfield, which was the illegal formation. This is going to bring up a second and eight for the Falcons. From the Colonel 46 yard line. Rockville, 34-14 over Ellington. So. There is a break for Ledger right now. They look like Rockville's on its way to a victory, which means Ledger should slide in even with a loss today. They want the sword. 30 to 28, second and eight. There's that dive again. St. Phil Ravix. It's going to be third and short. Ball at the 40. The Falcons are doing the Balboa body punches. Just dives inside there, penetrating through the gap, getting those three or four yards that they need, forcing it into a third and a possible good position for them to get a first down. 
Man, Let this is the heart and soul right now. Ledger needs its interior four to make a play on that dive. Definitely. It, it can't continually be the linebackers. No, and the clock is winding down. We're inside six minutes. Third and four. Ball at the 41. Toss right, Caboso. Cuts it back inside. Breaks a tackle. First down, Caboso. Huge run for the Falcons, and the chains will move. That kid was not going down. He was driving his feet like he had 500 pound plates on his shoulders. Didn't want to give up. His teammates and the linemen are commending him right now for that effort because that is a positive move for the Falcons right now. Ledger had him. No gain, Cabuso on his own. Multiple broken tackles and a huge first down. Now at the 30 yard line, the Falcons are in four down territory. Once again, looking to extend their lead. I love Ellis's composure right now, still being diverse with athletes getting the ball. Dive, St. Bill Ravix, good hole again. Another six yards on first down. They're not going to stop doing this until it's stopped. It's an old method, an old way of football. I know Papa Ellis is smiling right now. He's saying, keep it going. Don't stop that play. Going to give him four. Second and six. Ball at the 26-yard line. Now, of course, Coach Ellis will happily take a little bit of air. 41-6, Ram put it to Bacon Academy. Here, second and six. Perry. Toss right, Cabuso, trying to get to the outside. He has the first down, and the chains will move again. Man, these Falcons right now are holding down with that those type, those plays, those same plays that have been really physical and hard inside with the uppercut of the dive, then with the pitch to the outside, and Ledger is having a hard time holding contain in both. We're seeing a little bit of the guys cramping up. We see some guys having their hands on their hips. They're giving everything they got. Both teams are pouring it out on this final quarter. Ledger needs a stop. Fitch at this point trying to tack on to a two-point lead. Perry, there's the dive. This time Ledger defends it better, gain of maybe two. You said it before, brother, the end zone is a help. As they get closer to it, the defense can really be just going all out, but they have to be aware and disciplined that a play-action play can come out of it if coach calls that. Clock now a factor, under four minutes. Fitch would be very happy if they do turn this thing over to give Ledger under two minutes and 80 plus yards. Definitely. Man, what a great game today. The fans are so involved. The spirit is here today. Perry. Cabuso, toss right, Ledger fills, Cabuso bounces it outside, and I think he's going to have enough for the first down. If so, it'll be first and goal for the Falcons. The Falcons right now could do two things. Continue the run game, they haven't stopped it, but chomp the clock, be patient, wait till 25 seconds are in the mark, wait until that ref raises his hands up, because then you'll have less time for the Colonels to do anything. That was great stock blocking by both wide receivers there. They stayed on their blocks and it gave them a chance that running back to make some yardage. First and goal, ball at the nine. Ledger might have to start taking timeouts here Three as well. Left to go in the fourth quarter. Falcons on the march. Perry and Jackdown right from the backfield. Motion left by Fine. Here's There's the, the toss field. left to Fine. Fine gets to the outside, rushes into the out of bounds, shoved by Green, he's at the two. But the clock stops, which Ledger will take. It'll be second and goal. What a drive by the Falcons. <laughs> if Fitch scores, the extra point slash two point conversion mm -hmm. becomes crucial. Yes. Because Ledger, with two and a half minutes remaining, would have plenty of time to go down the field 
and attempt the tying score and two-point conversion. The question is, will Fitch go for two, or do they have the wherewithal to try that extra point, which would be enough? This is what's great about football. That call belongs to the head coach. And he's already, th and he's already thinking about it. Yes, sir. Balls on the oh, turf! Balls on the turf, but St. Ravix. <laughs> that was one of the things that we didn't see throughout this drive. Ball security is right there. Thank God he dropped himself right on top of it. He didn't make a move to pick it up. He did a great quarterback, smart move. Fall on the ball, we got more plays. Timeout, Ledger, 30 to 28. We'll take a break. You're watching Game Day Live on the day.com. can feel it and we know you feel it too fall is here crisp air falling leaves pumpkin everything and football so much football with a new season upon us it's a great opportunity to take a quick time out and make sure your insurance program is in order the burns agency is here to help you play by play strong coverage dependable service and touchdown savings give us a call or visit us online the burns agency proudly serving eastern connecticut since 19. 32. Crucial third and goal from the one yard line. 30 to 28 Falcons. Knocking on the door. Perry. And into the end zone. Touchdown, Falcons. Kevin St. Bell Rabbit puts him back up. Eight with 216 remaining. That young man started to drive all the way on the opposite side, and that energy finishes off to him, giving him the ball and getting the end zone. Great drive. 215, 216 remaining. This becomes a huge point after for Fitch. Yes, it is. They're gonna go for two. Coach looked at he's confident with their team doing the two point play. Also be careful for that hard count. They got him off sides before, so they could do that again. Two point conversion to the Falcons. Two receivers split out to the right. Toss right. Cabuso. He throws it. Right open. Right open. Trey McCoy in the back of the end zone. Wow. A great call at a great time. That little sweep to the outside, halfback pass. The corner had to bite and commit. Wide open. Great job, Falcons. And every time they needed an answer, the Falcons got creative. That time it was there, McCoy and the Falcons up 10 with breathing room, 216 remaining. Wow, this is gonna be very tough for Ledger right now because they're gonna have two possessions to get the ball back. So great call by coach, awesome job for this program. Resiliency showing on the side of the Falcons today. And I know Papa Ellis is smiling. I see him on the sideline right now. He's very happy. We still got time left on the clock though. Anything could happen. What a second half yeah, we brother. have seen here today. Unbelievable, brother. We'd also like to congratulate the Fitch Marching Band who this year got third place in the Nationals. So the Falcons will kick it off to Ledger. Third place in the Nationals. Ledger's going to have to score and get the ball back. You know, they've been squib kicking it all along, and I tell you right now, it would be nice to get Green just to slide him up and get somebody else deep so that if he gets the ball, he could do some magic. Do the old do London Whaler. No matter who catches it, turn and pitch it back to Green. Turn it back and pitch it to Green. You're right. I, I remember how many times Jamal, Jamal or <laughs> Shea was Jamal back there. I don't, I don't care if we, I'm at the 40. I'm throwing it backwards. <laughs> Plus, Jamal would have let you know if you didn't. Yes, he would. There's the squib kick, takes a big bounce, taken by Streckvis. Streckvis crosses midfield, so great field position for Ledger. With 2.10 remaining in the game, they are in Falcon territory. Listen, with that energy and that offense and explosive they can be, if they get in down there two plays and they'll still have time to get an onside kick, things can happen in favor of Ledger's side. But again, it's the best defense. Defense wins games. Which team is going to rock it? Right now, Fitch is out there with their defense. And if they can hold down here and secure it, that sword will be on their side for another year. First down, Ledger. Ball the 48-yard line of the Falcons. Lance in motion. 
Colton's gonna throw. Screen pass in the flat to Lentz. Cuts it back inside, makes a move, and he'll fall forward for a first down, which should move the chains and stop the clock. Where they marked it might be a little bit short as his knee touched the ground before that. We got a player down right now. So the clock is gonna stop with an injured Falcon. They're gonna get him right back up. Pedro Torres, he's up. What a heart of a line. He's up there walking and getting right back. He does not want to be replaced. Nolan will come in. He has to come out for at least a play. So yep. Skyler Nolan will come in. But that does stop the clock. Ledger should get right up on the football. And as soon as the officials uh, you know, wind it, they should go. Boy, everybody's standing up right now. Yeah, this is time Ledger doesn't have. They should have snapped the ball already. Second and short, Lentz in motion. Colton, pitch to Lentz, he's got the sideline, first down. And heads out of bounds, which was a choice he made. Very good. He had the side, he could have stayed in bounds and gotten maybe 10, 15 yards more. He got out of bounds, stopped the clock. Definitely a smart move for him because of the perimeter that were blocked, but he, they were getting squeezed in. So good move for Ledger right now. Boy, they're chomping yardages right now here. Right now, the biggest enemy for Ledger is time. 138 remaining. Falcons have their hands on their hips. They're reading their calls from their defensive coach right now. They're gonna need a score. The two-point conversion becomes irrelevant. They need a score and an onside kick. They put Green in the slot. Pull in the throw. Slant. Lentz has it. Breaks a tackle. One more tackle. Heads back to the middle. Lentz on his feet. First and goal. Clock will stop. Jacob Lentz with a coming out party on Thanksgiving. The They're getting explosive up on the ball right senior now. has been fabulous. Unbelievable, Casey. What a great throw. And they're going to keep the same formation. Green in the slot. Polton keeps it himself. Touchdown, oh, what Colonel. A play. Jackson Polton in the end zone. What the Colonel. Play. Back to within a four-point game, 38-34 with 118 remaining. That is a specially designed play where you give it to the fullback on one side, pull it, do a 360 because they're trapping the inside guy and Poulton was clean going in there. What a heck of a job. Great call for the Legend Colonels. 38-34. What a game on Thanksgiving Day. Fitting of this great rivalry. Legend goes for two. Back in that wishbone. Hand off to Green. Green waltzes into the end zone. 38-36. 118 remaining in the ball game. Can Ledger get it back? It's all about the onside kick. If they can get it, there's a chance. If, Unbelievable. If Fitch gets it, they can run out the clock. Let me it all comes down to the kick. Let me tell you this. If the turkey is burnt inside your oven, don't worry about it. We'll replace it because this game has been worthy for it. Unbelievable, guys. Great effort by both teams. This is a very passionate game. This is what tradition's all about. When you're fighting for the sword, it means something. And both teams are valiantly trying to show themselves as being the best team for the day. We got a minute and 18 seconds left on the clock to show that. Well, I'll tell you what. We talked about how Joel Barlow, coaching staff, was here scouting Ledger. Yeah. And at the first half, they were probably saying, how is this team 8-1? and one? Yeah. Well, in the second half, they're probably going, oh, we don't want to play them. Well, I hope that they're still here because sometimes when they see a team like that, they head back home to get a turkey leg. Never underestimate a game until there's three zeros left in the clock. The, the Ledger team that showed up in the second half is a team I would want no part of. That's right. All right, Wanamaker. Onside kick has to be coming for the Colonels. Falcons have the hands team out there. And he falls down. Oh, he slipped. He slipped. Ball's live. It's still alive. alive. He picks it up. Alive. He's going into the end zone. What a play. That's a mistake. That's a mistake. Touchdown, Raheem Carter. gets the ball back. If he just fell on it, they could have run out the clock. That's true. That's true. 
But that synergy and energy that came out of it when he picked it up and scored, boy, it put the heads down for the Colonels. Right now they're feeling sore. If their coach knows this, they should tell them, we still got a chance. We just got to stop this play. If they have a chance to call a timeout, I think that's what coach should do. Redirect them and tell them, there's a stat. We can do this. We got to make sure we stop them. We'll the see what happens. The moment for Raheem Carter, the freshman, with a kickoff return after Wanamaker fell on the attempted onside kick, but it's only an eight point game, which means Coach we're back to them two. needing this extra point. Ledger still in it. Ledger stops him, we still got a ball game going. Wow, only. Last time they went with trickery, what will they do this time? Toss left, fine, cuts it back inside, reaches. Is he in? He's in! He's, He's in! in! Oh my God, what a great comeback for the Falcons. What an effort. Wow. Adonis Fine with a fabulous effort. Man, they were punched to the corner. They were getting caught with jabs and uppercuts, but they still found a way to put a final punch into it. This is something that's gonna be memorable for this team for a long time. That, that kick. That's what they should call it. It's the last play that really affected them. Man, what a game today, guys. What a game. Fine reached out and found the end zone 46-36 in one of the best games I've seen all year. Yes, And brother. we have had on game day in quite a while. This has been exciting and with as good a second half as you've seen. I concur, bro. Got to give props to that. He can't buy. <laughs> What a second half energy, man. Unbelievable. So heartbreaking to have a team lose on a game like this today. But again, it shows just what football is all about, man. You develop a team, you develop brotherhood, you develop family, and you still have to represent no matter what. Great job for the Falcons at this time, but they still have to secure the win. Coach is chepping them right on, giving them the love that they need, and they're going to feel it and seal it off. Hopefully they'll do a good job doing so. Fitch will kick it off. Ledger, stunned at this point. They were so close. Green back to receive the kick for the Colonels at about the 15 yard line. The boost over kick from the left half to the 40. One last possession for the Colonels. I believe Fitch will squib kick this in the middle. Secure it, keep it away from number seven. Cabuso. Here it is. Pooch kick. Fair caught it. And Ledger to fair catch it so there's no time runs off the clock. You know, I got to say this. It was only seven seconds run off the clock after this whole energy that came across, brother. There's still a chance. You know that. 112. They can score in a couple of plays. It's not over yet. If James Green can throw a football, now would be the time for the toss sweep, the toss half back pass, option. Yeah. Or just give him a rock and get to that second level. He could cut and make sure he could get into the end zone. He's the kind of kid that's hungry to get in there. Well, they're putting him out in the slot again. This is going to be a pass. No one ran the clock. Pulling the throw. Pressure, deep down the sideline into triple coverage. Oh! He was going for Lentz. Lentz was covered by both Sosa as well as Carter, and the pass falls to the turf incomplete. Now, Coach has quarters coverage. That was something that he shouldn't have thrown. He did have a matchup over here on green side where he could have thrown the ball quicker, but I think he was just trying to go for that big touchdown pass, and it didn't work out. These safeties are playing over top and keeping everybody in front of them. As you can see, they're four across, and their depth is a little bit deeper. Usually he's at 10, now he's at 15 to 18 yards. They also have a linebacker drop back at seven, eight yards. So there's five guys deep right now covering the depth of each zone. Holding the throw. High in the air, looking for Green. Green, he catches it! What a reception by the playmaker at the 32-yard line! Green went up and got it. Got the player down. It looks like Perry. Perry cramping up. Boy, these guys are giving their all. Their last bit of energy that they have in their tank is poured upon this field right here today, this beautiful field. Unbelievable. I'm a grass guy. You know that, Casey. We've seen a lot of turf games where the ball bounces back and forth, man. But this grass field today has brought a lot of energy, man. Plus a cushion for these guys because they're jumping up in the air getting this ball. 
We're going to have to come up with the Falcon Colonel grade eight of the week. There's oh been my God. so many amazing plays in this game. Perry being uh, treated right now for cramping on the field. Green went up and got it at the 35. The clock will wind, but the chains are moved. So Ledger can get right up on the ball and, and they can go the second that this thing gets started. And they have a minute. It was Cabuso. Cabuso. It was Cabuso, Cabuso. not Perry. Yep. Cabuso on the turf. He's off. He's out of the game. Well, these jersey numbers, <laughs> they're tight, but I tell you, what a great effort. First down. Again, five deep for the Falcons. Clock winds with 58 seconds. Pull in the throw, and he throws and, and overthrows Green. That was a little bubble screen. They wanted to get Green one-on-one -on, -one on the outside, but it'll be second down, but the clock, 55 seconds remaining. You would have thought this game would have 82-plus points against two option teams that try to keep the ball away from well, each other. The way the first half flew by <laughs> and the third quarter, we didn't. I didn't think there was. I thought we'd be out of here. I'd be home already. Yeah. All right. Green back in the backfield. Ball's on the turf. And it's going to cost Ledger time regardless. The clock is running still. Ledger needs to get up on the ball. Third down. It'll be a third and 10 for the Colonels. 40 seconds left to go in the game. Poland keeps it himself. He stays in bounds though. It's gonna bring up fourth down, clock running. Ledger needs to go. And they will burn their timeout. So it will be fourth down, Colonels, when we <coughs> are back. We will take a quick break. You're watching Game Day Live on theday.com. can feel it and we know you feel it too fall is here crisp air falling leaves pumpkin everything and football so much football with a new season upon us it's a great opportunity to take a quick time out and make sure your insurance program is in order the burns agency is here to help you play by play strong coverage dependable service and touchdown savings give us a call or visit us online the burns agency proudly serving eastern connecticut since 19 32. Fourth down, Ledger on life support. Here it is. This right here would be their first chance to take another breath. Lentz in motion. Pulled an option left. Pitches to Lentz. First down. Gets to the outside. Hammer by Saintville Ravix, but the clock will stop. The chains will move. Ledger can get up on the ball. 20 seconds remaining. Boy, I tell you, these Falcons right now are just playing a prevent uh, coverage, keeping everybody in front of them, and that allows those four defensive backs, plus that linebacker, to get a good angle of pursuit and secure a tackle, and that's what they need to do here. Ledger takes its last time out. They'll have it first and 10 at the 20. Now, if the Colonels do not find a way to pull out the Thanksgiving Day miracle here at Fitch, they are still in a decent position to make the postseason as currently Rockville is on top of Ellington in their game and it could be that the Colonels slide in with a loss into the eighth spot and ironically that could put them at Cromwell a team we're familiar with they could end up as the eighth seed uh, it would not be a home game but they might be in the playoffs even with a loss all of that will be figured out later today as so many games hang in the balance around the state it's going, the, it's going to be the NASDAQ these last couple of days until they get everything going. First down, Ledger from the 20. Poland going to throw. Rolls to his right. Looking, looking. Throws across the middle. Short. Incomplete. 13 seconds. Thirteen and a half seconds remaining. The Colonels are just running out of time. Even if they manage to score, uh, and recover an onside kick, at best they would have a play. Yeah, and this is something that they're not used to, running spread formation and things like that and passing the ball. Green to the right. Strong quarters coverage with man-to-man -man on James at this time. Holton 
Pressure, rolls right, has some room in front of him, looks, throws, end zone, tipped, and intercepted! Intercepted in the end zone! Johnny Sosa, and finally, the Falcons can come away, breathe easy, they will retain the sword. What a game, what a game. Congratulations, guys. Unbelievable, great game today. Again, defense wins championships, and this is what it's all about. Defense won the sword today as the offense dominated with great diversity. Man, what a great game for both sides. Ledger didn't give up at all. They fought to the very end. Kudos to both teams on this beautiful Thanksgiving Day game. Unbelievable, brother. Man, great call plays too, brother. You did a great job. 46-36 in a classic here at Fitch High School. The Falcons will win their sixth straight. The sword will stay on this side of things. Groton will have it. The Falcons will take a knee and a game colonel team will go home and wait the results from around the state to see if their hopes come true and if they're playing on Tuesday. Of course, find us on Game Day CT on all our social media platforms for the Foxwoods player of the game and the interview with Coach Mike Ellis. Playoffs are coming. Who from the ECC will be in? It'll be determined today. For Peter Waffe and the crew, for my man, Pasta Santabria, I'm Casey O'Neill. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Happy Pavo Day.